What's happening? This is John Sue, just slabbering. It's the twenty-fifth episode. Very, very, very special guest today. How's it going, mate? You alright? Yeah, it's good to see you. Bro. Living it's the dream. Picture, it is, yeah, it's good times. This is the biggest guest I've ever had on the show. And I'm not meaning by star. Tri part. Triple XL, like I'm yeah. You, there was one guy bigger than you. I was trying to get. He's out. Clayton right? Ross. I don't know who that is. Oh, is he? Is he a strong man? Is he a strong man? From Bangor. I see. I never know, right? See, see what people do that do that type of lifting. I always look at them and go, "I'm like that, and I'm not." Maybe I'm the same. Then. You know what I mean? Because I do. I used to look at Glenn Ross and think, "Ah, it's me, like you know." I know, it's and then he got a belly like us. And then you, and then you realize that under his belly is a fucking is a wooden man, like you know yeah, what I mean? Course. Under my belly there's another belly. I don't know. I don't you know what I mean. I don't know. But I was in school. I used to always. It's still nice, or even um, on the mission, I'd let them just punch in my belly when I was hard as the one because I've got so I'm solid like I'm I like that I, I like that as if that's what strong men do as well you know yeah, what I mean well, just a... fucking I'm gonna lift this and then you punch me in the bollocks right that's fucking as hard as you want then uh, there was a week there was a big other fella in school with me big um he was a big Sikh fella he had a big right. bourbon and he was called Tony and I, and I was saying go and smack me and I'll find how strong I am and then I said let me do you and then my hand just sunk right into his oh mouth. shit I realised not just because you're big doesn't mean you have aye aye yeah yeah mate do you know what see like see with this fucking heat wave at the minute I've been thinking a lot about school like because I remember I was I was writing about this this week I remember there was this thing that happened there was a year where we ended up in a heat wave like you know you know we're like ended up in a heat wave you know we're uh like the summer was shit, like weather wise. And like this, like this year, summer's been shit. Yeah. And now September. Yeah. And I'm watching, like, this was like, I must have been about 14 or 15. And I went to school over near here, over on the Ravenhill. And uh, the, uh, we had this wee patch of grass outside, like the second building in our school. I'm not trying to make my school sound class. It was shit. Like the, the building was old as fuck. And we had this other wee shitty bit that had like RA and music and history in it, right? Outside our during this heat wave, we started playing a thing called prison rules football, and the only rule was there was no rules. And I was I was writing about this because it was like, it wasn't like you know, oh, there's two balls in play, or oh, you might get you know a dirty tackle here. I mean, it's probably the most violent thing. Oh, it was cool. like you know, oh, you passed the ball five minutes ago, so I'm stabbing you with the compass. Like yeah. it was, it made it was. It was prison. Rules. It was fucking mental. It only lasted for about four days before the school realized that like. Kids were getting their fucking glasses and asthma inhalers smashed. So I mean, it was fucking. and robbers. Remember that? I remember and that was and pretty much um, prison rules. Yeah, yeah. Because I, when I started school in Manchester, I went down and they said, we'll play cops and robbers. And it says he's the toughest in the school. There was a guy called Ronnie. Right. And um, he was the cop and I was the robber. Right. And he grabbed me and he couldn't. I just flung him off and I said, move, you know. And then it came and I was the cop then. Ah. And I like choke holding him was trying to get him into the wall and he was fighting I ended up smacking him into the wall bust his oh, nose oh shit and then he was crying and all and then everyone said Johnny's the toughest man uh, so you know that. it's like a uh, what do you call that for Lord of the Flies type shit literally yeah it's fucking mad oh, I love Lord of the Flies I sampled that in um, one of my songs as well. yeah yeah that's my old so listen I didn't even introduce you this is Karen Bartlett you already knew that absolute champ Legend, bro. I haven't even met you before. This is the first I know, time I've well, met you. I sort of met you a wee bit at that at Shane's thing. You were over, yes, but I, didn't I was just sitting there, there to be fair. Yeah. I, I was waiting to bounce, and uh, you and Paddy were on. That was the day you were talking about the grenade and all. Yes, a great time. Yeah, again, you see when you're talking about comedy and all, right? Uh, so I was like, first of all, I didn't think I was a comedy thing, you know, oh, I was talking about the grenade, highly and comedic. Then, like, and yeah. then, like, he laughs at the wrong time. I was saying, so. But I had a grenade in his leg. That wasn't the punchline. <laughs> he spits out his tail and I'm thinking, what? Didn't he that do was that? fucking mental. But it was funny. Like I was. was I was literally sitting behind you and Paddy out there just being like, these are two fucking headers here. Like, you yeah, know, it was funny. But yeah. I, yeah, I was excited. When I seen you there, I was thinking, happy days. I want to speak to Karen. Huh. And then halfway through the podcast, you left. So they didn't even get to speak. To I know, mate. Yeah, I think we were we were just we were hanging around for the start of that, and then we're just gonna bounce on. I can't remember what the fuck we were doing that day, but mate, I was sent you outside like last few months of being just a fucking blur. Like I yeah. can't even remember when that was. Yeah. Like seriously, it's no, just I been mad. Uh, but I'm glad. I'm mate. I'm so happy to be back here. 
Here's better. Well, so where, where I was in Embra for a month there. What? Here, Embra. Edinburgh. And it was nice, like, but I mean, yeah. you know I mean, this is, this is good. Yeah, obviously. Belfast. I'm not going to lie to you. It's my favourite place in the Belfast world. Belfast's fucking great. See, I, I sort of get why people sometimes go, oh, shit, and they move somewhere. See, see, the only thing, the only reason to leave here is weather. Yeah, but can I tell you the truth as well? I love the weather. So yeah, I, I see us now. What what can be better than baking your bag in the middle of September after having winter during August? Literally. What's better than it? No, no. Plus, uh, we I picked up my wee daughter from school now yesterday, and then we drove straight to Port Muck. Where's Port Muck? I'm um, up in Island McGee. Have you never seen it? It's like Island a... McGee. Now hold on, Island McGee. It's near White Abbey, is it? Uh, on up past on right. Abbey. It's up right. Yeah, Whitehead. Whitehead, sorry, that's what I meant, Whitehead. Whitehead. The Browns Bay. So Browns Bay, near round the corner from Browns Bay right. is a place called Port Muck. Right. Special. Is that is that um There's a wee island too. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like so Port Muck is like I think I've been there. Is it does it have what am I talking about here? Does it have a tiny wee harbour in it? Yes. Yes, I've it been does. there. It has a wee pier. Do you know we we discovered that I, I didn't know Browns Bay or White Abbey existed until the pandemic. We went out there a few times. You know when you're just like, Good. let's just drive on around. No, no, this is this was, was, uh, if you were escaping. This is when you were. Bay. This is when you were. <laughs> this is when you were allowed out, but you weren't allowed to like, right. you know, breathe on strangers. So, yes. yeah. uh, we would we would nip out that way. I like it. There, my my I uh, there's a street in in Whitehead that has all these like old timey. Fucking like Roll Dahl, yeah, C.S. Lewis type houses, yeah, just like old big class houses. And I remember it was one day my brother came with us, me and Chloe were there on Arkev. And Arke me and Chloe were like, Isn't this place class? Like, yeah, all these old houses, like Arkev, you feel me, um, so depressing here. It's really like, it's really like on top of me. I feel pressurized here. I'm like, Fuck up, I'm, like. And you feel pressurized. People say that all the time, and then I'm driving about thinking it's the most magical spot I've oh, ever I like seen it. in my life. Yeah. But I think it is true what you said. And see if people lived here their whole life and all, sometimes they can't see. I get it. Like I lived in Spain now for six years. Is it? Yeah, and they wanted me to move back again. You speak Spanish? Capasa, Amano. Oh, mate. Capasa. I, I don't speak any either. Like, yeah, I, I don't. don't. That's the only I say. You can say Capasa, Hermano in different ways. <laughs> it all means different stuff. You know what I mean? That's good, yeah. Capasa. Or a yeah. or not, like. It's like saying all right, you can't. Yeah. You can do that in different ways. You can go, you can go all right, you can't. You can go all right, you can't. You know what I mean? <laughs> Changing it up. Yeah. So let's go back, bro. Right. I want to go back. When what what did you do growing up? Then what what was your aspirations? What did I do growing up? Yeah, fucking pull up balls himself. Uh, and <laughs> in, in, in my wee bedroom. I I I don't know, mate. Music mostly. I was mostly playing. Like, so you're a musician. Yeah, I play guitar. So like. I was a big part of my growing up, like once I started learning guitar. It reminds me a bit of my cousin. I see, yeah, on your uh, part of your stand up, you make up way funny songs. I do songs and 30, 30 wee musical one liners and all. Yeah. I like. My I, cousin's like a genius at making up yeah. funny songs. Do you know who's good at it? Or Kev. Or Kev's really good at it. But then he plays music all the time. Yeah. Like that's his job. Yeah. But he's. Do you know who's fucking good at it? William. William Thompson. William Thompson. William, William, do you know William can rap as well? No, I've never. Heard you've got to get him. Get him on and get him rap. I'm gonna have to get. He can legit rap like, um, and he, he's actually really fucking good at making up music. Uh, but um, yeah, like I was in bands and all, like, but there, right. So I, I don't, mate. Jesus, I don't know if it's this fucking heat, but like, when you said what you do growing up, I'm literally going Resident <laughs> Evil, Resident Evil Two, Resident so Evil Three. Game, man. I was, I would have, I played a lot of games. Yeah. Do you know what it was? I had, I had a bit of a falling out with my mates in the street when I was about 13, right? Yeah. And I didn't really have any mates anymore around, around where I lived. But I wasn't allowed to go anywhere else. So I was sort of like, you could say, a bit of a loner for a few years. Like sitting in the house with a guitar and a PlayStation. Yeah. And uh, and then I've just kind of kept that going, really. Uh, for a long time. <laughs> uh, but it started to pay dividends, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I, I knew if I stayed in my monks long enough, the world would come to me, like, you know what I mean? So, so like, I, yeah, so, like, I would have been in bands then with guys out of school, and and then I was in bands, or a band with people out of uni, and then that kind of... What type of music was it? So, like, I was in, like, a pop-punk band, and emo stuff like that, you for a while. You were an emo kid? Oh, Were you? Mate, rare, like, no, no one ever sat me down and went, who hurt you, mate? Nobody ever, nobody ever said, here... At, at nail polish, 
what well, talk to me. I oh, don't tell me you did you oh, black nails and made me sick. And like and we arm bands and all and I'm glad you agree uh, anyway. I mean, did I though? I mean But you know, you don't paint your nails no more. I don't I don't do that anymore. That's the thing, oh, thing that just makes me sick when occasionally, I occasionally occasionally uh, I look over when Chloe's painting her nails and I'm like Yeah. <laughs> That's good. So you know what? Funny enough, see, growing up in in school and all, yeah. I, I went to school in like Manchester, Moss Side, in Manchester. But there was a wee group of like um, emo kids. Yeah, and I, they became my best mate. Ah, uh, and I like say I was mad as well. I never, I loved rap. Yeah, well, yeah. But I also loved like I love Nirvana. Yeah, yeah. You know, and especially like calm as you were. Yeah, yeah. As you were. Big like, change. Like, yeah. I loved that. And like, um, like Johnny Cash is probably my all time as well. I love Johnny Cash. So I was like an eclectic. Yeah, yeah. I, and I didn't have to like, just because I liked rap, I didn't have to wear FUBU. I know what you mean. Like yeah. a fucking rapper. Yeah. You're with me? I just like, I liked all music and it didn't give a fuck me, bro, in that respect, you know, of like trying to, I don't know, I always thought like kids who are like dressing up in any, like I always seen all the different kids, I just mingled between them all. I know, I know what you mean, you yeah. Know? I was, I was one of, I was probably one of the only people that ever put on FUBU and it actually just fit me. Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> if you like, get two sizes too big, I'm like, I did, oh, but it just yeah. fits. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, I would have done, yeah, I did it for a bit of, a bit of, bit of music in that band. I was in a couple of bands that were like that and then I joined this band that were like a, uh, a sort of chilies ish type band, like a bit more funk, and and uh, I sang in that band, and then and then I was in a musical. I was in like a two piece with one of the guys out of that band for four or five years, and then I started comedy while we were still doing that. Yeah. And then he left, went to London. I was still doing, I was still doing like acoustic gigs up until about two thousand. 16 something like that would have stopped uh because it was fucking decent coin like but I'm, I'm glad i don't have to do it anymore yeah and can you remember how you got into the comedy and how did it all start i just i, I literally was like I, w I was always fucking around and and trying to make people laugh anyway and then like whenever whenever um you know shows like mark awake would have been on and all when it was good like with frankie boy and all on it and I would have sort of been sitting there watching them, but I would have been like playing it, if you know what I mean. When they were doing that scenes, we'd like to see stuff. I'd be like trying to jump in with stuff. People would be like, will you fuck up? I'm trying to watch this. I'm like, no, but I have this bit, right? Yeah. And then we went, I was going to see comedy all the time. And one night we saw this guy and he made, he was, he was, he was dirt, like he was shit. Like, yeah. and it wasn't, it wasn't even, like no, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. But I was sitting there going, yeah, like, it makes you it it can, it can make you angry, but actually, what it does to me is it, it makes me cringe so hard yeah. watching somebody die. Some comedians love it. Yeah. Some comedians love watching comedians they know eat shit, and I sort of get that because it is a bit funny. Yeah. And if you're going on after them, you know you're probably going to eat shit too, and it's kind of funny. But if it's somebody you don't know and they're just eating shit, it just makes you go, "Yeah, you cringe for them." Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like what it's like watching your team get beat, yeah. right? And you're just going, "Fuck sick," and then. So we saw this guy and he was doing that stuff we were talking about earlier. I fucking, you know, I was in Sainsbury. So you're like, yeah. all right, all right. Yeah, and, uh, or, you, yeah, you know, um, and it was just, it, it was, it was poor and it was in the empire and he got fucking eat alive, right? People just started on him. And I remember going, Jesus Christ, right? And one of my mates was with me, he went, you should, you should literally try comedy. You should do that. You're at least funny or not, cunt. And I went, that's a good reason for me to do something is I'm better. I'm better than someone who's shit at it. Right. Yeah. And, uh, I was like, right. And he goes, you should just, you should just ask for a gig. So I went over, Carl Murphy was on that night. I had no fucking idea about comedy. I was so arrogant as well. I walked over to Carl Murphy after gig. He was having a smoke outside. And I went here, here's a gig in here. Will you? And he was like, who are you? And I was like, you don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm the great supreme though. You can't like, you know what I mean? And he was like, I was like, I'm Karen Bartlett. And he was like, do you do comedy? And I went, no, <laughs> but I will. And he was like, yeah. you can't just fucking start in here. You know what I mean? He was like, you've got to like go to other bars, you, like learn how to be a comedian. And then once you've been doing it for a while, you can fucking jump in. It reminds me of me and Blue Nights. But go right, right, <laughs> right. Why, what happened, what happened? Uh, same as I, I just, I said I wanted to be a part in Blue Lights. Right, right. They sent me, next thing they sent me an, an email saying, we we'll want you to audition. Right, right. Sign right. a waiver and here's a part and send us an audition within two days. Yeah. 
I had never done no acting, but I thought, this is it. No, and yeah. I says, I'm going to smash this. And they're going to make a whole part for me. And I sent them to me a dish and wait. Yeah. No. And, I had, and then the sense said, sorry. Oh, you mate. You need more acting. No, I made it fucking, it happens. Like, it's fucking, mate, it's hard. It's a hard okay. gig. I'm going to do it like you. I'm going to, I'm going to be the acting version of you. I like that. Just fucking get into it. Did yeah. he give you a gig? So, well, so he said, he gave me info about the guy at the time he was around the pavilion up the normal. So, which was like, it's sort of a mix of open mic and like established acts doing new stuff. So I went and asked for a gig there and the guy said to me, look, I can't get you. This was in like November. I think it was on booked until February, but I'll see if I can get you a gig somewhere with somebody I know. I went, right. So he sent me on the guy that was running a gig in the basement of McHugh's. And it was actually a fucking great gig in there. But uh, I went in, the guy goes, yeah, I can give you seven minutes. And I went, right now in music. If somebody said, I'll give you half an hour, if you did 35 or 40, nobody gave a fuck. And it was like, yeah. you know, actually, it means sort of give me at least half an hour and maybe one or two more songs yeah. after that, right? But uh, comedy, it's specific. comedy, it's like, it's seven, do your seven and fuck off, right? And I went, I did not know that. Like, I knew nothing. And it's sort of, you're going back to 2010, so it wasn't really like, there probably was some information online, but it wasn't. It wasn't something that would have struck you. You didn't go, I'll go online and fucking type in how to start stand-up. It just wasn't like yeah, that. Yeah. So I just went in. I'd written this fucking bit, like a script nearly, and I'd sort of learned it and then learned it to the point where I was ad-libbing off it and making it more natural. And like I sat my brother and one of my mates and my sister down and was like, I'm going to do this as if it's the gig. And they were pissed themselves. And then they were like, app it shit. Don't do app it. Yeah. And we cut it down. And we got it down. I was like, what's well, 20? So, I mean, he's bound to be happy with that. Oh, I go into the gig, start doing fucking, trying to do crowd work on my first gig and all. And somebody needed to, again, go, here, who hurt you, right? Like, everything right at home, mate. Like, I went in, I'm doing banter with people. And that took a couple of minutes. And then I did my set. I did like 23 minutes, my first gig. Mm-hmm. And the guy come over to me after and he goes, listen, that was great. If you ever do that again, I'm, I'm going to absolutely bury you. Like, and I went, yeah, just stay and I, yeah, and I was like, do what again? He was like, you've done forever. You were on stage forever there. You're meant to do seven minutes. I went, I thought that was like a, a minimum. And he went, no, it means do it. And then uh, fucking <laughs> leave, leave, like just fuck off. Yeah. And so like now I'm still notoriously shit with timekeeping. But yeah. like at the minute, it's more like I get shit with it because like a lot of the time I'm going on last. So like. People go, oh, do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. I, I like, give me 25, but whatever you want. So I'd maybe do like 40, right? Good. Which is fine, but like half an hour, 40 of your headlining. But then it, may, it makes you a bad timekeeper, like, because, or for me, it does anyway, because I'm used to doing that. So I find it hard to judge. If somebody goes, give me a seven. I'm like, right. That's going to feel like fuck all to me. I'll feel like a bird living on stage. So I'll, I'll have this. I got this now, mate. The, vi- yes. the Casio the vibrate, touch. yeah. So set it for like two minutes less than I'm doing, Love and then that. time it, you know. So it's yeah. it's actually it's set for five minutes less than I was meant to do last night. I so I will have time to do what we saw. <laughs> it's fucking mental, but that's how I get into it. And then just it just escalates, you know. You do well the first couple of gigs, and then I had I had loads of free time back then, so I was gigging all the time. I would take on anything, like you know come to fucking Strapan, there's a five goal, and you're like, that sounds like a good time. You don't realize that it's five in a war zone of a bar, and, you know, the mic isn't loud, and people are talking, and you've got to stand there and go, so, um, right, like, I I used to be a wee bit of a loner, like, fuck, you know what I mean? I used to have this bit. I had this, a closer, made it so scunner. My first closing bit was about being... Never, never being, basically being ignored by flyers, you know, and, and PR people. Because I used to work in a, in a nightclub here. Um, and so I knew, I knew how it all worked. Like, you know, they would give out vouchers in the middle of town during the week. And I would just always get ignored. And then, and then one day, you know, I booked my first gig in the Empire and I thought, this is a big dick day. So I did this bit about, about, about big dick days. <laughs> and uh, not to be confused with big bag days, which is just what's sweaty. And um. I was doing this whole bit and then the closer was like, I booked this first gig in the Empire and I was leaving. One of the PR girls was the handmade voucher and I, and I, and 
I got arrogant and sort of went, no, no, I don't, I don't take shit like that, right? And she insisted and gave me it, and then it was like, you know, for a free burger or something. Um, so it was like, it's, and I look back on it and go, I used to close gigs out. Well, it's so shit. Yeah. I used to think, you know, you look back 10 years ago, you thought you were a ride, like, and you're like, I was a knob. I, mate, you say to me about growing, growing out of emo, 10 years ago when I was doing comedy, I was wearing, like, band t-shirts and ice hockey shirts. My hair was still down like this. I was wearing fingerless gloves to gigs. Nobody turned around and went, stop it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, like, I like it to a certain extent, but I always thought the girls were all right doing all the emo stuff, but the fellas were a bit, I don't know, you know, uh, I struggled with it. I know exactly what you cool mean. It's cool to be depressed. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. I yeah. did it. I was saying, yeah. it's not cool to be depressed. They were like, yo, man, what's up? I used to, I used to try to, to fight against that, yeah. you know? Yeah. I wasn't, that wasn't my vibe, like, you know what I mean? Tell you what, though, great jumpers, you know what I mean? Uh, of course, I Great jumpers. I, I wear the band t-shirts yeah, and yeah. I had the Guns N' Roses t-shirt. Uh -huh. well, like I said, I'll take what I want from it, you know? But So here, how did you become a... a I told my cousin, I've, I'm getting you on, and he goes, oh, the, the newspaper columnist. And I says, no. no That's he's weird, a uh, And he goes, yeah. no, he is. And then he got the paper uh, from me, and there you are. Mate, it was weird. Do, do you know what's so really weird about that? I was thinking... I said to Chloe, I was like, do you know what? I would love to have a wee, a wee gig that's just writing something every week. Okay. And I would love it if it was a wee in the newspaper or on like a, you know, on a, on a, uh, like a, a website or something. And maybe I'll just be talking shit or reviewing things or something. I was like, cause I trained as a journalist, like, so I used to work, I used to do it. And I was sort of like, you know, it'd be nice to sort of keep that ticking over. And, um, and literally that day. Uh, my manager phoned me and went here. I was talking to a guy on a Sunday Life, and he was saying, "Would you be up for doing a column?" And I was like, "Are you? Have you bugged my house?" She called. Like I was like, "Right, okay." Whoa. And then um, we just went from her. Do you believe in God? That's the segue. No, How'd you I work for Sunday like, Life? Do you believe in God? Um, no, because it sounds like a like a, you could say. I'm yeah, you put it into the universe, and yeah, you know what I mean. But you know, I do. I do believe in. I, I believe that there is a God. I don't I've increasingly during life begun to move away from the organization of what, what religion that I grew up I in. I thought you were gonna say paramilitaries or something. No, the no, the, the, the organization of religion of yes. really religion. I've really begun I'm interested in it, but I'm interested in finding out about different ones too. And like so I do believe that there is something. I mean I, I think there's there's certain things that I go there's no way there's just, I, I don't think there's any way that so many things in my own life, in my experience, happen by chance, chance. you know, I think so. And, and it's not that I necessarily think that there's predetermination either, where like, you know, it doesn't matter what you do, but I think there's a certain, you know, I sort of look at it like it's like an RPG game where it's like, you know, uh... You have a certain set of choices to make and they can all lead to different paths but like you know along the way there's other people's choices and free will too so like you can end up like oh, mad shit can happen red dead redemption too yes red like. yeah like a complex yeah. rpg yeah. basically so like because i just don't i i don't buy that some of the stuff that's happened to me just in terms of like i mean made good things and bad things yeah Bad things happen, you go fuck sick, and then actually, you know, it leads into something good. Like good. Yeah. Like but even even the way I got into comedy was as a result of like some bad shit happening where you know the reason why I had all that free time was because stuff I was meant to be doing fell through. Mm -hmm. And then I had a year where I was like, I wanted to keep like doing I was at uni. I wanted to do a PhD. And it fell through last minute and I was like, fuck. And then that band I was in, I took a break from it and it was hard. I took a break from it because basically we, we, one of the guys, uh, we asked him to leave the band and then I stopped being mates with him or like we sort of fell out over all that, but he was like one of my best friends. So it, it was shit, but that all led into them, me having the time to do stand up, exactly. and then that's led to good things or like, you know, even like shit that's happened, like my family, bad stuff has happened and then it's led to. Well, actually, that meant we moved house, which meant we were in a nicer area, which meant, you know, 
nicer things happen to us all. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's the parable of the the farmer. You know, yeah, the, the farmer. Yeah, yeah. You know that one. I think I do. Oh no, fuck! I definitely don't. Well, what he said was, he I said, thought you were on about the fucking seeds thing. No, yeah. no, he says uh, it's good one. This he goes, um, a farmer lost a horse, and all of his neighbors said, "That's oh, really bad, isn't it? That's really bad." And he said, "Maybe." Oh fuck! I have heard this. The yeah, maybe. and then it and becomes then like a it comes back. Yeah, it comes back, but it brings a few wild horses. Yeah, back, yeah. And he goes, "That's brilliant, doesn't it?" He yeah. goes, "Maybe,", maybe. Yeah. and he keeps saying, "Maybe," but it keeps changing. I have heard that. What do you call him? Uh, David Mamet, you know him? He's a playwright and a movie director, a movie writer. Uh, he talks about that in one of his like master class things because he's saying about like in the formation of stories, have that attitude of going, you know, paint yourself in the corner and then go, maybe, yeah. and then work your way back out of it. Because if, if, as the writer, if it's fucking you up yeah. to choose what happens next, an audience will predict it. Yeah. So you get something surprising. So Yeah. See, as like yeah. a, a, a songwriter myself, mm. I've always had like, like you see all the emotions that you have, like the bad times and bereavement, everything. Yeah. I've I've always like uh, read it all down, you know. So I see life as like a series of experiences. Mm -hmm. Some of them are going to be amazing, phenomenal, and some of them are going to be terrible. Yeah. And it's just about embracing them all because yeah. we're only here for a, a, a shadow anyway. Yeah. So we just have to enjoy it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. See, like, embrace it all. I think. I think one thing that I've been thinking about a lot recently is like, so I'm I'm back I'm still I'm back studying ancient history again, which is what I did ages ago, and see like see really studying that hard like uh, and you're learning about people the intricacies of their lives like two thousand years ago, mm -hmm. like it really does make you go I'm a fucking I'm a dot on a dot. On a dot, like in the middle of history, like yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. you're so small. Doesn't mean that you're not. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're insignificant. Everybody has a life, like, and I mean, you know, if you think about, but, but, like, how many people are as famous or as notable, say, as Julius Caesar or fucking Genghis Khan? I heard you talk about him before, or like, you know, people like that. Where it, it doesn't necessarily mean you've got to be a fucking warlord to be known because obviously you can have artists or whatever as well but like if, if one mean. or two people out of billions yeah who have lived are known you know it does put into perspective you know you cracking up about something cutting you up on a roundabout cool. you know what i mean yeah, of or course give you a bit of perspective on yeah. did i actually just scream abuse at somebody through an xbox no you know no, no of course so you're studying ancient history mm. and is that the greeks roman know? i'm doing a roman history project on yeah. communication the romans yeah interesting you say about julius caesar not one i don't know if you know about um the calendar do you know about the calendar oh, the, that he sort of changed it all and well, made it about two, himself well our two months uh, july and august yeah you can guess who their name yeah, is. yeah julius caesar's july and august is augustus yeah. you know, um caesar augustus yeah. but um it's interesting, our calendar's completely messed up. I proved this to my girl, she couldn't believe it as well. The, there isn't 12 months in a year, there's 13 months. Oh, the, uh, the lunar, the lunar yeah. year, yeah, like yeah. For example, and say like, you know, how many sides does an octagon have? Eight. How many tentacles does an octopus have? Eight. And what month is octopus? Oh yeah, yeah, 10, yeah, because there's extra two yeah, ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah so like September. Sept to Sept. Sept and no well, yeah. well, idea is the decimal yeah. place, December is the 10th month. Yeah. But they've switched it all up now, I've totally fucked us up. There is something absolutely epic about, you know, having a level of power though, where you go, I'm yeah, changing, changing the I'm thing. changing the year. Yeah, the Gregorian. You know what I mean? Nobody's tried that in a long time. Yeah, it's fine. You know what I mean? Imagine like fucking Rishi Sunak going right here, seeing between August and September. There's two weeks called Rishi. Yeah, Rishi. Imagine that. Week, next, yeah. next level shit. What bro. do we write? It is. It's yeah. uh, so um so I seen someone in the comments when I was talking about Genghis Khan saying, Oh, I can see Karen with the inaccuracies and all. So have you studied about Genghis? I haven't even that's that's some comment in the comments. I was just sitting there I don't even know if I'm on camera or not. Nah, yeah, I'll have one time you are. It shows you like a backstage camera. All right. I might have to get back. I'm probably, li I'm, I'm probably literally sitting there like this. Yeah. I have rest and bitch face. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, wasn't trying. Yeah, you see, then I thought, whoa. I have a stomach at all. 
There's a brilliant um, set of books you need to read. You're, you're, I heard you talking about. Yeah. I, she said to me about them. I can't remember what you call the author. Yeah, Connie Goulden. Right, okay. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. It's I G G U L D E N. Right, okay. Connie Goulden. But he wrote like um, three books all about Genghis's life. It's like hus- historical fiction. Aye, aye. So he like, um, but he's phenomenal. Do you know, there's, there's a guy, what do you call him? Robert Harris has done the same thing sort of with Cicero, the Roman politician in order right wow. trilogy it's fucking great well it's so good if, if, if you think that i promise you bro you need to read connie Goulden's julius caesar books right okay he's done two he done two he done the conqueror series and then he done the 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 caesar series and the caesar one is phenomenal i must check it out mate because i do love that shit like yeah i like when you sort of know I like when you have an idea of a, of a period in history and then read fiction from it because you have a wee idea yeah but then it's seeing somebody else's fucking take on it that's see like i read a lot of robert harris books to be fair like him uh you know he did like fatherland and fucking uh munich and conclave and stuff like that and other mate guys just fucking he, he's the sort of content when you're actually reading it you're like why am i why am i attempting the right stuff yeah. do you know what i mean you know somebody yeah. somebody just did you ever go see like a band or something you know you go see Iron Maiden and just go, I'm my way home to set fire this guitar. Like, there's no point. There's no point. You're never going to... Do you never get, a, 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 like, inspired by it too? Like I get I, inspired by people who do music. Yeah. If you like, that is music that is within my reach. Yeah, I thought you said, like, you just get inspired by the shit ones you think are fair. Yeah. Them. There's <laughs> ones, like, there's ones... Do you know, people say, for, for instance, like, I, I, I've i never really had an electric guitar, right? Yeah. So like, but but most of the music I listen to, like I listen to a lot of metal. Like so, like yeah. you know, I want to go see Iron Maiden, Kill Switch Engage, bands like that. And when I go see them, I know I never play like that, but oh. I can, I, I can't sing like Bruce Dickinson, but I can sort of sing a bit like the guy in Kill Switch. I'm sort of sitting going, this is this is more inspirational. Iron Maiden just is like we're better. Fuck up, stay in your box. Yeah, we'll do, we'll handle the music, right? Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Have you ever been to an Iron Maiden show? No. No. Mate, they do all mad shit and all. They they had, like, uh, I mean, had the that famous like the the Eddie, temple, the, 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 the big skull, yeah, the, the skull. Military took that and all uh, in a big mural. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. I sampled that on on my first mixtape. It was right. called Belfast Baby. Right. And there's like a wee baby in the pram and all bombs going off behind it, and then I sort of like superimposed that big uh, Eddie, you know, yeah. like chasing her. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's I, cool. Like, I never actually listened to much Iron Maiden. How long have you been doing music then? I started like making music when I was like twelve. Fuck. And again, it was all like, see, I was a bit sensitive too, and I, and then I would write raps, and then mm. all my mates loved them. So then I was like, oh, they love them, and it's a bit like stand up or something. You tested the waters; they all love. Get a wee bit of encouragement off people that know you a wee yeah. bit, because I mean, it's fucking hard. Like I was, it's it it's hard because if you're, you know, for instance, like when I would have been going to school with my guitar. People in my school, hugely supportive. People on the street, just give you shit. Just like slab at you. Jeez. Literally just go, guitar, yeah. fruit. You know what I mean? You're like, right. thanks. Right. Um, <laughs> and then those same people, though, years later, will come over. Number one. And in, in fucking, like when I was down playing guitar in McCracken's with my mate. Come over and be like, mate, remember you live near me? And I'd be like, yeah. I remember you were a full con for 10 years. Yeah. Um, so, you Fair know, play, yeah. so like... It's it's one thing to sort of get that bit of encouragement. Yeah. I think it's really important for people because yeah. I think if there is one thing about here that I don't like is that I, I, in my experience and in the experience of other creative people I've known, a big challenge is getting through the first year or two of trying to do whatever it is you're doing yes. where people are slagging you for it yeah. and going, stay in your fucking, stay in your fucking shelf, you can't. And I hate that. Yeah. So like if people ever ask me, do I remember? Oh, mate, when we were training as journalists, I remember we went on a trip to Stormont. It was where we're learning about, you have to learn about current affairs and the structure of government and all if you're going to be a journalist and all this bollocks, right? But part of it was the uni arranged for a famous journalist to come in and chat to us. Guy was a fucking ball bag, right? He came in and went, and he, you might, you might know who this is, but he literally went, mm, you're choosing a very bad time to get into journalism. I'm looking at him going, fuck up. Stephen Nolan. I, it wasn't even, no. It was, although I do, maybe I look like him or I don't know. <laughs> it was, he's a, he's a very posh old guy. Yeah. And it was just such a bad time. And he talked to us about the troubles and we didn't have to look for stories. And I'm going, 
Well, it sounds like you had it easy, but I mean, you know, stories were there. You went and covered them. I mean, saying the holidays, I mean, they're dealing with fucking horrific things. But no, I'm sort of sitting there going, the, the stories, I'm sitting there going, themselves. like, you're shitting on a room full of people who are bossing their bollocks to get into this industry, and you're going, yeah, not now. Not and I'm going, you're a fucking ball back. Yeah. Whereas, say if he'd come in and went here, yeah. no better job for it, work hard, and fucking, you, you know, you'll get there. Yeah. Is that not a bit more fucking encouraging? Yeah. Now, I know some people respond to, you know, the reverse psychology of going, you know, you're shit. Yeah, but it's still not a good way. I'm just like, come yeah. in and Fuck come in, that. come in and tell us. Yeah. Maybe, maybe tell us about one or two of the pitfalls, and then say, you know, good luck. Yeah. Everybody would have appreciated it. Whereas, like, we all left going, yeah. he's a fucking dose, like, um, you know what I mean? It's weird that, bro, because I was at Portmuck yesterday, and um, it was dead eventful. There, sick. The, the Coast Guard came. Some people like went out too far in their panel oh, for us, and, and then next next thing the news and all was there too, and the journalists saying, "Oh, we're going to talk about it on the tonight's weather." Yeah, but when I tried to speak to them. I don't know, I just got the vibe, like, they were very, like, you know, the th th the thought they were somewhere. Ah, yeah. And I was thinking, you know, even, like, my mate there today saying, like, I have influential people at the BBC. I was thinking, fuck off. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're not even influential. Like yeah. I said, they've been taking it easy. Like, yeah. You know I mean? I'm not into, the, like, all that bullshit. I don't know. There, there, is, there is a lot of sitting back in that place. Yeah, a lot. Oh, stop. Mate, see, see when you're actually trying to do work with them, see over the summer, forget about it, like. Yeah. See shit, December, January, forget about it. It's literally, yeah. like, Nothing happens. It's like, oh, well, here, I'm off for eight days, and then that person's off for 12, and then you're just sitting there going, so nobody does anything for two months? All right. Um, and then you'll ask me why it wasn't done yesterday? All right. Um, I don't know. Fuck that. It's not me, bro. But uh, see, I saw somebody. I'd never seen a paddleboard before. And actually, it was down at that fucking place. Uh, what do you call it? Port Muck? Yeah. One of the days, genuinely, one of the days, me and Chloe were down there. I... The, the, somebody was on a board that is one that it sort of comes up out of the water. I don't know if you've seen these. Yes. It looks I, like a hinge. Yes. You have to from, stand on it. Yeah. From where we were, it looked like he was his, his comp was floating. Yeah. And I, I literally went, What the fuck? Like, I went, I'm having an episode. Like, Chloe was like, <laughs> Chloe's like, What's he doing out there? And I went, It looks like he's flying on top of the water. Yeah. And she was like, He's hardly doing that. And I went, Well, what is he doing then? And then she looked at it. We're zooming in on our phones and still can't see it. Yeah. You're going, Jesus Christ, this guy's like a fucking magician. Like, yeah. And then, it, 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 like, he fell in the water and then we saw the board and how it yes. works. Like, we dick. I still don't even really understand how it does work. Neither it's do weird. I. Like, because it's just a wee stick at the back, isn't it? I, I don't think it would work. With me? With me yeah. on it, yeah. yeah. I, I don't, I don't know. They haven't, built, they haven't built the one for the big man yet. Yeah, like, I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah. We, it's just a fucking raft, I'm you know what I mean? Yeah. I've got a fear. I've got a real, real fear of the sea. So do I. Do you? Water. Yeah. Do you? No, Huge. that's my biggest fear. Like, yeah. And well, I don't know if this is illogical, but I'll tell you the truth. My fear as well, it's more to do with like megalithic creatures. Right. Mine is just to do with I don't swim so good and I'll so die. Amazing swimmer. I'll die. Like, I, I, do you know, one of my big fears you is to like, learn how to float. Do you ever watch Float Brilliant? Do you ever watch, uh, do you ever watch Huge Float Brilliant? Must get. <laughs> Must get a t-shirt that just says I float good all the time. float yeah. good. <laughs> I uh I am um, I I have a fear. Do you ever be watching like a movie or something? This happens in Nice Guys. Do you ever see the Nice Guys? Shane Black film with Russell Crowe, no. Ryan Gosling. No. Highly recommend. It's on Prime at the minute. It's great. Anyway, uh a guy's like running through, like trying to get out of somewhere, and there's like a do you know like a like a pond, like a big pond type thing, like a pool type <laughs> yeah. thing. Uh, near this house and there's a wee bridge over it and he's running over the bridge just knocking people off it see if I was one of those people I would die yeah. <laughs> like getting knocked into a pool or somebody pushing me into a pool or something I won't be able to get onto my feet and I'll die and like see like in a in the sea and all I, I'll get knocked over I, I got knocked over by a wave this has happened twice where I've got knocked over by a wave I've maybe gone out to my tits yeah. and then a big wave comes and knocks me over Yeah. if somebody's not with me I will die. Like, Chloe has had to literally pull me up and then I walk back in, shitting myself, going, never again. You know what so, I mean? I'll tell you the truth. Last night, I'm a really good swimmer. I, I am. I've always been a good swimmer. And I was jumping off the pier, you know, but I'm scared mm. as well. I'm just scared of all the creatures and shit. So then, and I always stay in beside the pier, but I swam yeah. the, the furthest I've ever been yesterday. And my girl was with me and I was like, it's good here. Yeah, no, it's all right. And then, and then I looked down and 
it, uh, it was obviously rocks, but for some reason in my head it was an orca. Oh, it was fuck. a fucking killer whale. Jesus, in Port like, Mock? Uh, yeah, but my, no, and there is. Did you know there is? I didn't know that, no. Before God, you can Google it right now. Right. Bro. I typed it in, is there killer whales? Because it was there the day before yesterday swimming. Oh, incredible. And a wee head popped up out of the sea. It's a seal. All oh, right. The seals okay. are starting. Well, here's seals apparently can fuck you up as well. Yes, and guess what? Eight seals. Orcas. Orcas, right, and, okay. And they're all around the Scottish northern... Oh, fuck, I didn't know. The waters couldn't believe it. They said they've been reported loads of times. That's not so it. I just thought I'd seen an orca and my heart went and I was like panicking then. So I go into like instant irrational fear. Mate, the, 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 mate the, see the panic of water, like it's fucking, it's real. Yeah. No. Like, I, I, I definitely go into, I will die in yeah. this knee height. Oh, look, you know what I mean? No, I don't like, understand. It's mental. I really do. Like, I just I freak out. And I always think in pools, I'm going to hit my head and die. Because it happened to somebody in Neighbours, like yeah. in the fucking early 90s or something. Seriously. <laughs> Water just fucks me up. What was that TV show you mentioned? Neighbours? Oh, no. Oh, it's a it's a movie. Nice Guys. Nice Guys. You should definitely watch it. It's fucking lethal. Here, I'll tell you what I watched. I'm not I know. Gonna... I have oh, to is, that is that the beep, beep? I think was going to say, though. I said to the Emmons earlier, if you want to cut here, I'll come back in after this meeting for 20 minutes if you need more time. Yeah, well, that would be all right. If you, but I, I don't know how long the meeting's going to go on for, it's the only thing. Wait, is it close by your meeting? I'm going to just take it out in the car on Zoom. Wow, here we'll do that, that's good. Do you want to do it? Here, listen, we're going to take a short interval, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but big shouts to the sponsors as well. DJK, Budbury. Who's this one? N2N. Buzz Lightyear, the champ. Uh, Hotbox Studios, Weedy Wonka. That's pretty much everyone. So, tell me about these edibles. Well, tell me when we'll come back. Yes. Right. right. Take two. Come on up right. soon, guys. See you in a bit. Pop. What's happening? This is John Sue, just slabbering. This is episode 25.1. We're just here after the break. We've never had a break on this show. I know, oh, I'm sorry. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm a very demanding bastard. I like that, bro. Yeah. I didn't even ask the questions. Um, a big Buzz Lightyear there said he's trying to sell a script there or something. Uh, one of his was, yeah. Did he, did he buy it? No, it wasn't. It was, it was more of a, I'm trying to, so they've read a script of mine that they aren't going to buy. And then they're having to meet with me to go, what else have you got? So I'm trying to go, here's this idea, here's that idea. So they're going to take a look at two more. Can I just tell you something? You fucked up, bro. Why? They loved every idea that you give them, and they're just fucking rinsing uh, you. The, they're rinsing the you. They're they, just tell me all your Because if they do, it mean, I have all this, and if they do, you just yeah. ride them. Yeah, because I've seen that. People think that, people think that it, it's easier to do that, I think, with songs and stuff. Well, Disney do when, when it's a full movie, like. You say that, did you ever watch um, The Lion King? Yeah. You know about that, don't you? I don't know. It's completely... I, I am aware that it exists. It's Rob from what? Kimba, the white lion. Right, no, I've never heard well, of it. It's going to freak you out. I'm going to send you a video, right? And it's going to freak you out. And they released um, The Lion King the year that my man died. Oh, the man. guy who made it. And it's a Japanese film. Oh, right? fuck. Right, it's okay. Kimba, the white lion. It's evil uncle with a scar on its oh, head. Wow. Kills the da. They have wee midnight. to Everything that you see, there's a wee bird, the Timon and Pumbaa character, Mantle. everything. They just copied the whole thing. So they're not paying them anything? No, they robbed them blind. That's robbed Mantle. them blind. Bro. Tell you what, sure, though. Blue Light's done that with you and Shane. Did you see that? Did you ever see um, Shane's, remember Shane done his wee thing, um, Belfast Blues? Oh, fuck, I wasn't in that. I, you not in there? No. No, I was when, I was when, uh, I was when, uh, I wasn't really doing comedy. For I, loved, a wee while. I loved your um, Banshees of... Oh, the Banshee oh, Bones of Inna Sharon, that was so good. Do you know what was class about that? There's a shot in the middle of that, that's my favourite thing I've ever done, which is, I'm literally standing looking out at the sea, and the wind is whipping around me. And the Adidas are just billowing in the wind. And it's it. the best shit I've ever done in my life. It. And all I did was stand her. I loved it, bro. Did yeah. you watch the film? Oh, I, I did, yeah. I'm a big uh, big fan of that guy, uh, Martin McDonough. Of course. So yeah. you've seen In Bruges. Oh, In Bruges. Seven seen. Psychopaths. We I call haven't it. seen Seven Psychopaths. It's probably the weakest though, ones he's yeah, seen. I think, yeah. But like, yeah, uh, Three Billboards outside Abbey, Missouri. Have you seen that? No. Three Billboards. <gasps> no. Watch it today. It's... Unreal. It's so good. It's so good. And I, uh, we went to see it. It sounds, it's a terrible name for a film. Yeah. Cause you go, what's this about? Right. So seven when we went, billboards? so seven cycle past three billboards, different movies, very different. But like we went to see, um, we went to see three billboards. And so 
sometimes what will happen is I'll say, see when I know there's a film coming out from a director or writer that I love, I try to find out nothing about it. So like Martin Scorsese has this Killers of the Flower Moon or something coming out in October. I don't know. I don't even know what it's about. Yeah. I refuse. I won't look at anything to do with it. I won't watch the trailer. I'm going to go fucking see it. Just so, it. so I'm just yes. going to go and let it attack me, oh, right? Gosh. Now, whenever we went to see Three Billboards, we went to see it in the Alice and I said to Chloe, I'm picking a movie. I'm going to see it. Come with me if you want, right? She's like, I'll go with you, right? So we get there and she goes, what's this called? And I was Three Billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. And she's like, oh my, right? And we're walking in and I go and lift money out of the bank. And she goes, what's this about? And I went, I don't know. I've found out nothing about it, right? And we'll go in. She's like, Jesus Christ, it's gonna be it's gonna be one of them fucking melting films that cause that I like, right? And uh, we get in, we're sitting down, and the f first shot is of three billboards outside this fuck old town in Missouri. And Chloe literally turns around to me and goes, "Is this actually about fucking billboards, right?" And I went, "I don't know." I know. I'm <laughs> letting the director hit me with it, right? Oh, it's not and she's sitting there going, "I can't believe I've committed to fucking two hours of this bollocks, right?" And uh, I, about 20 minutes in, I look okay. around, she's sitting there like this. Yeah. Right. Like loving it, like, so it's yeah. fucking great. That's great. Three billboards? Yeah. Now, I did try to get her to go see Oppenheimer. Actually, we were going to go see it, and then I wasn't too well, so we didn't go, but uh, I haven't seen it Killian's yet. one of the best. Like, I love ah, he's Killian. Brilliant. Like, he's brilliant. Do you see The Wind That Shakes the Bar? Yes. One of my favorite yes. films. I saw that in, uh, in, in the QFT at Queen's. All very... You don't clap, you click your fingers, you know. Love them. In there. Uh, yeah, oh, it was good. You click your you know, fingers in there. So artistic. Yeah. Uh, and see, did you ever see that Hunger? The movie Hunger? Yeah, the, but yeah, a guy a guy that grew up across the road from me was in that. It was yeah, he? Brian Milligan, yeah. That was mad. I yeah, didn't realise either. I bought popcorn brother. and everything and went into the cinema. And then I realised, what the fuck? Yeah, it's not a... And then I sat thinking, fuck, I shouldn't have done this. I know, know, yeah. But it was intense. Man, the, the irony of eating that. Yeah, yeah, like I remember, there was one scene sticks in my head and I even remember them just mopping the floor of the prison for about 15 yes. minutes. It was just one continuous scene. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the mundane, monotony of it, yeah. The monotony of it, sick. Fucking but, mad. Do you like um, series, TV series? Some, yeah. What's yeah. your favourite series? It's like Greg and Bad, probably. Yeah, you're like me, I always. Uh, the Shield. Never, uh, never oh, the Shield it. is a great old cop show. I'll tell you, yeah. Belter, bro, I don't know if you've seen this, but you need to. It's fucking golden. The Righteous Gemstones. No, I haven't seen it. Where's that on? Um, I don't know. I, I did pirate all my stuff. Oh, this guy. You on a wee fucking, a wee fire stick, no, right? I don't even use fire sticks. I'm on the fucking internet. Why, why did everyone laugh when I said that? <laughs> I'm on the internet. Bro. All right, You okay. know about the real world. You can go on. You can just watch it. Apparently, I don't. Maybe. Because, like, I all I know about, I mean, I'm a wee, I'm a wee rule keeper, okay? See my Netflix, I pay for it. I don't let, I don't let other people steal it. Right? Yeah, I just, I just use my girlfriend's Netflix. <laughs> uh... People, you people, our ones used to use mine, and then, you know, like every now and again, it makes you change your password, mm -hmm. or like it says, it'll maybe suggest to change your password or something, because like other people are using it, and it's like, oh, you've a random login and fucking Glen Gormley or some shit. So I was like, right, okay, so we're going to change the password, and I made every cunt about ten people texting you going, what's the password? And they're like, yeah, fucking pay the fiver, you cunt. That's yeah. what the, that's what the new password is. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I know. Hear me though. I don't get it because you can go and watch series, and you can literally watch any movie, any um, series you want. Yeah, but you're riding somebody blind somewhere, like. But you're not really. You're not, you are though, because like, not, look at like, look at the writers in America. They're all on strike at the minute because they're getting bucked to death by. Like, but hold on, bro. Listen to me. When I was like before the internet. I can't remember the way Chinese folks on holiday and they've come round to you selling you all this deep. Oh, they're riding people sideways too. Are they really? I mean, they're sat in the cinema filming it. Like they're, that, but at, they're least, yeah, at least with that, there was... They're at least with that... Support was, the Chinese sellers. At least with that, there was an enterprise to it. They actually, they had costs. So, but hold You know on. what I mean? They had to go and buy a big JVC and go and sit yeah, in the fuck. This is the question. This is what I'm saying. For example, right? Look, I watched The Sound of Freedom, right? Have you seen that film? I don't yet? think so. Next level. See, you don't even right. know nothing about it because they were hiding it. Disney and all tried to hide this. Was oh, this? Number. Is, it's about the child traffic. Oh, see, mate, see all that. No, I know, but I know it exists. I know about it. Yeah. I don't want to sit through it. Yeah. That, 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 it's not like that. But it's not like. Is that, that the one? A, it's done in a really good way. It's is that done, the Corey Feldman one or no, Mel no, Gibson? No, no, so Mel Gibson isn't a part of it, but he just um, promoted it. It's right. my man. Um, 
Jim Caviezel. Oh, right, okay. You know, the guy he played Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. I've ruined his career, like. Why? Well, I loved it. Oh, you mean? Uh, everybody just went, fuck this guy. Playing Jesus around them. Did you watch The Passion of the Christ? Yeah. One of my favourite films. It's a hard watch, so like. Oh, it's next level, bro. But it's, but it's like. It's Mel Gibson's it's a, probably one of my all-time favourite directors. Ever. It's, it's a gore fest, though. Yeah, but it's there's a, It's there's, like we were soldiers, but in ancient Judea. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, of course. What about Apocalypto? Have you seen that? Because that, that's the one that's about like the, the dawn of time. I no, not the dawn of time. It's like a- ages ago, though. No, it's well, it's about the. That's what I'm thinking of. Ten thousand BC. Yeah, that's something. Of... Shit, that's some. That's not Apocalypto. Bad. No, I don't think I've seen that. Apocalypto is probably one of the all-time greatest really? films of its next level shit. It's about the Mayans and how the Spanish come in and take. Oh over no, it definitely the haven't seen it. Fucking right. incredible, bro. Uh, Telling you what. Um, he directed Braveheart, did he? Yes. Uh, Braveheart was his first one. Do you I, like Braveheart? I like Braveheart. Do you know what I like? I like American Braveheart, The Patriot. The Patriot. I like that. Yeah. See that it bit? Over, it was overlooked, the bit, The Patriot. It was overlooked, mate, but see the bit. There's there's two bits in it that I love. The bit when he gets the rocking chair right. I love that. And then also, obviously, the bit when uh, he takes the two wee lads out to save Heath Ledger. They're walking away with Heath Ledger and they've got him bound. They've just killed the other son. Him and the two wee lads are fucking running through the forest. Next level, and then he just fucking tomahawks yeah. about eight people. I don't remember really. when like bullets are whizzing past the English guy saying he's there shaving. Yeah, you know, yeah, battle thing. yeah. I, I also enjoyed. I uh, I don't know how well it's aged though, because effects like this are usually shit. The cannonball, like rakes along the fucking Breaking field, the and then it shows you the you know, it shows you it coming into the into yeah. the lens as yeah. if it's gonna take your head clean off. Yeah, I see yeah. some shit in like Braveheart where you watch it back and you can see like the extras and the, the extras are just going like us at each other. Literally. Oh, you know, but now um, I'm a I'm a movie buff myself. I love to yeah. I love movies, and I was a bit like upset with the way they're going at the minute. You know what I mean? I think cinema is at a real decline. There's some good ones out this year, though. This this year has started. I think to pick it up a wee bit, like you know, a wee bit. I hope so. I, hope I haven't so. seen it yet, but apparently, a Little Mermaid was great. Oh, I'm trying to think what else I went to see. I watched the Little Mermaid. That was a bit desperate to be fair. I have to say this. The Mission Impossible movie is fucking outstanding. I've never seen that either. Like the new one? Yeah, I haven't seen it. Right, listen, no one's going to that for dialogue, right? Yeah. You're, you're going to it to see Tom Cruise take a motorbike <laughs> off a mountain and here he does it well. Like It's 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 the best stunt I've ever seen in a film. It's yeah. unbelievable. Like, I watched, um, the last one I've seen at the cinema was The Meg 2. Took my daughter to see it. It is hilarious, isn't it? I've literally just done a clip it's on... on my fucking head, huh? I literally just did a bit, and we clipped it on my podcast this week, about a movie that is basically the Meg 2 made fucking 20 years ago called Shark Attack 3. Right. I don't want to go into it all again, but mate. Yeah, no, nah, it's funny that he says like it. Like the Megalodon yeah, in the movie. like Because yeah. on Watch series, that's what comes up as well, beside it, it comes up. You know you know the famous line from that movie, though? The, the I'll just say it, John Barrowman, like, talking to some woman, and he had lived this line, and they kept it in. Or the director said to him, script shit, get into the fucking, get into the, the sex scene here. Right. And so John Barman turns around to this woman and he's like, yeah, I'm so wired, yeah. How about I take you home and eat your pussy? And and they, they it's in the movie. No. We wa- Do you know, a guy that I went to school with gave me the DVD and was like, watch this. Don't, don't eat during it because there's a line in it that will make you shit. <laughs> and it was that line. And then he also gave me a movie called Cyborg Cop 2, right. mate. What's that, like a fake Robocop or something? Yeah, but mate, it's so balls. Like, he, he got into this habit of buying shit films, knowing they were shit, and he just watched it for a laugh. Yeah. Um, I had one that I got out of Tesco for a pound, and it's not it's not Navy Seals, which is shit. I don't know if you've seen that with Charlie Sheen. No. That is shit. But there's one called US Navy Seals. Yeah. It's like all the guys who are like extras in like The Rock and Connor and yeah. all those nineties blockbusters are main characters in this. I dare say. I've never seen so many silencers. Yeah. It's so shit. All it is is just an excuse to fire silent yeah. weapons. Like, see, you you're a bit like my dad. Then see, my dad, he'll put on a movie. No, it's crap. Yeah, and then if it's crap, guess what he even does? This is weird. He sometimes even mutes it and just sits there and watches it. I'd walk in and say, what are you doing? That's, that's not level. Like, I'd say, what are you yeah. doing? He goes, just watching this here, working out what's happening. Like, what? <laughs> it's probably because he's doing better dialogue in his head. But I says to him, like, you don't have to suffer it. I, I know, mate, mate. You know, my dad, my da, the first day I got Netflix, very first day I got it, I was excited, right? Because I, I, like, I didn't even, it was, it was, I'm an OG Netflix guy. Like, this is like, yeah. 
What did you used to get it when they sent the CD? I was about to say this is like about a week after they stopped doing that. Yeah. I'm on it, right? And I actually don't. It's, the CD. it's online and it's like right. A few people were talking about it. I'd seen a few ads going. It's it's fucking four ninety nine or something. I was like, right, it's five or a month. See what it's like. Went on. Couldn't believe the choice. Yeah. My dad walks in the room, right, and they've got fucking Scorsese and Tarantino and all on it, right. And my dad walks in. And he goes, "What's that?" And I go, "Netflix." And he goes, "What's that?" And I went, "It's like a." It's it's like extra vision on your TV. And he went, right. <laughs> and he was goes out there and he took a remote off me and I'm like, oh, yeah. It is your TV, Jim. All right. So I give him it. Yeah. And made he fucking he put on this movie, all the choice in the world. He put on this movie that had the guy from Quantum Leap in it. Yeah. Scott Bakula. Uh That's where he funny. played he played a magician who was also a private investigator. It was called Lord of Illusions. <laughs> it's one of the worst things I've ever sat through. Two and a half hours long. It's fucking bag like i mean it's ju it's just it's sweaty sweaty bag yeah i'm a dad sitting there like i saw way through it oh yeah that's what and it gets the end of it gets the end of it and i go well and he goes wasn't great was it i'm like no it fucking that's wasn't <laughs> no it fucking wasn't but it's taking us up to five to six and at yeah. six o'clock you watch the news every day so i can't yeah. uh, i can't now go yeah. i'm picking something yeah no nah, the, the noise the shit out of me bro i can tell within five minutes less I can tell by this, the the act of the straight, you know what I mean? Yep. Straight away, the yep. camera angle. If you're, you're going to want it. Yes. yes, and then I just think, no, I'm not even wasting I do. Time. There's so much choice now that we have a 10 minute rule in our house of anything new goes on. You're like, giving us 10 minutes. Yeah. If we're both not loving it, fuck it, because yeah. you'll find something. But then the problem with that is sometimes, like, if you, because if you had gone the extra vision back in the day and got a movie, you have to. And the first 10 minutes was shit, you're watching the whole thing. Yeah. And sometimes the first 10 minutes of a film, you're going, Really? Yeah. And then it kicks in, you're like, this is fucking lit. Yeah. You know? Well, it's interesting that because um never forget it when Blockbuster was open and I lived in Manchester when we were young. Yeah. I used to go to Blockbuster. Um, I wanted to see the new Wesley Snipes movie, The Fan. Oh, I remember the fan. Remember, and it's like yep. an obsessive fan. And I was excited to buy it, bought it and all from um from Blockbuster, gets yeah. home to put it on. What was it? The van. They give you their own thing. Yeah, the van, V A N, the van. Remember, it's um you know the guy from Dublin, and he's done the shows. And you remember, but it's about a wee van in Dublin driving about. Yeah, I was disgusted. Now I've watched a couple of them films that, that he's done. And yeah, they are actually classics. I know, but you're saying I couldn't watch it. I couldn't watch. It's not Snipes, though, is it? Nah, it's what I mean. I just remember thinking, what? I'd be like the one. I want to get Passenger Fifty Seven, and I've got the van. Yeah, literally, that's what it was, bro. I'm talented. Oh, mate, fuck Snipes, seeing his head out like. So I'm um, it's kind Demolition of, Man. Yeah, obvious Demolition Man was sick. And then what about them prophesizing um Arnold Schwarzenegger's gonna be in in Demolition Man? Yes, that's right. Arnold Schwarzenegger's the He's, president. Yeah, and fuck, then he, he nearly he nearly made the it. governor, didn't yeah. he? And he Super killed Tucky again. Williams, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He did what? He he ordered the execution of Tucky Williams. Who's that? The founder of the the blood of uh, the Crips. There's an Oh, oh film. he's like a did you he, ever watch? He didn't. He didn't give him clemency. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, did you ever watch the film with um, Jamie Fox? No. You need to watch it, bro. It's that? called Redemption. No. And it's all about um, Tookie Williams. Right. Okay. So he killed like a policeman. He got uh, went on death row. But then when he was in death row, he um, <coughs> he, he like wrote all these anti anti gang books. Right. He okay. won a Nobel Peace Prize wow. in jail, and then um, Arnold Schwarzenegger then ordered his his his, his death. Imagine know? getting terminated by him but also yeah, imagine yeah. imagine winning the nobel peace prize in jail because they give you about a million pound for that no, literally. and like what are you going to spend it on super noodles like yeah no, fuck think, sick and then they got killed anyway as well by uh, him so but he's wild but i loved um i loved uh wesley snipes back in the day bro sure but blade blade was my blade. favorite blade. my favorite but oh. I think that they ruined all the tea uh, all of the, the there's not enough uh passenger uh Passenger airline hijack movies anymore. I know. Delta oh, Force, yeah. Chuck Norris, Lee Marvin. But sure, I think 9 11 put an end to all that. Dead oh, dead. yeah, because you know, it scares mean. people. Though. Right, listen, I've done this week thing here. I want, to do, I want to know what you think is better. I wrote this this morning. I was thinking, do you prefer, what do you prefer? Right. Well, like I just choose yeah. one. Right, okay. I'll have to be. But this is Belfast edition, right? Right, quick fire. Snowballs or 15s? Snowball. Yeah. Yeah. Snowballs, interesting. Yeah. Teddy Files or soda? Soda. Mods or the Rinka? Sorry, just let me say about soda. Yeah. 
toasted though. Don't fry that shit. Yeah. See fried soda. It's, so it's just like a big fucking. Yeah, you can squeeze out. You can the squeeze, oh, I hate yeah, that. I do as Toast well. that shit. Yeah. And then butter. A skim. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And then you put, pierce it down. I pierce it. I so I I take it out and then I'll have, I'll set it and I'll go chop 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 half into it. Yeah. And then butter it and it goes fucking. Yeah. Sometimes I like um, cheese and uh, Protestant sauce on the top. What's Protestant sauce? HP sauce. How's this a part? Brown sauce. sauce. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't mind do cheese like and brown sauce. I don't, I don't, I don't mind it. I don't. I would, I prefer a bacon element in there than cheese. Yeah, I like cheese. As I well. don't really like, I like cheese. cheese. A strong cheddar cheese. I like, I like it on certain things, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't like it in a soda. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so you said um, tiny farms or over soda? No soda. Oh, a soda. soda. Yeah. Right, right. Toasted though. So toasted soda. Yeah. Mods or the rinka? Mods, I don't know what the other one is. No, the Rinka. The What's Rinka that? special. It's up in Island McGee, but it uh, used to be a dance hall in the 20s. And that's like, it makes its own ice cream. Oh, weird. I was going, what's that got to do with mods? I was like, I knew, but do, do you prefer ice cream or a dance, you know, ice cream? No, but to do the special ice cream. Right, okay. I'm going to tell you this now, right? My favorite ever ice cream and ever is from the Rinka. Right. If you ever go there, right? What it's a big it? white and red building, says right. the Rinka. And you ask for... A sun, um, a strawberry sundae, white chocolate and strawberry sundae with the strawberry cheesecake ice cream. Dirty. And they put in real strawberries. There's like wee bits and all. They put in real strawberries in it too, and then it all like melts together into some like pink ice cream. Oh, bro, it's the best. Unbelievable. Thing. Oh, see on a hot day and all. The record sounds like a good time. Let me find where is it. Island McGee. Island McGee. It's up there, like uh, the Gobbins and all. The Gobbins. Yes. I've been there at Where We Path Network. Yes. Yeah. Literally round the corner from the garbage. Yeah, I would fully, that's one of them places where you could probably get a wee bit and just build like a wee place to live. Just looking out. I would do that yeah. if I could build. So instead of the Rinka, because I had a feeling you wouldn't know the Rinka. No. So mods or Morellis? Mods. Why did you even have to think? I hate Morellis. I like Morellis in Port Stewart when I'm there because I have memories from when I was about seven. Of being there yeah and it was a good time and then when i lived there as a student i went a few times and it was a, i went for a few times laugh, but it says like ireland's italian ice cream so it's, what is it is it ireland's or is it italy's you know like it's a bit well sort of but i mean that's their heritage isn't it because they're irish now but when the first came over italian exactly but i mean we have our own heritage we've got mods and shit in the rink you know what i mean like we don't need italian ice cream uh, like, what about mods and did mods go to italy and say it's, it was a big thing. It was the like it was least, it was at least Northern Irish ice cream. Italian ice cream and Italian chippies is a big or a big thing in Britain and Ireland because when people were emigrating from Italy to America, some of them stopped here, and then they opened chippies and and so some of them are like a hundred years old. Where's your favourite chippy in Belfast? Oh, Raffles and Aldi Town. I've never been. Raffles and Aldi Town. Right, because can I give There's you that? different Raffles. Right. Raffles on the Aldi Town Road. Opposite Colony House on the Busy Bay. That's the place. Right, I'm going to go and try yours. Where, where's yours? I, I might have already tried it. Where is it? The Captain's Table in Glen Gormley. No, I haven't been. Special. Where is it in Glen Gormley? Um, is it at that big garage? No. Yeah, it's like no. its own wee. It's like it's its own wee house. Right. Uh, but it's like a wee like hut, and it says the Captain's Table on. Right. It's been there for years. Where is it near though? I'm just trying to picture. Where me. is it near? You know um, Tim Horton's seen you talking yeah, about yeah. Tim Horton's on your wee video. Disgusting. Like Tim Bag Horton. of shit. I yes. hate it. Yeah. I put in and thought I'm never going back to shit. We've Jumanji, the one on the boat. I'll never be there again. Yeah. Here's a true story about that place. Guy went to give us out a couple of donuts on uh, a tea and a sparkling water. And he was bleeding on his hand. And he, he bled on the bottle and on the no, bag. I swear to God. And, I, and we're looking at it. And Chloe goes, I'm like, Chloe goes, he's bleeding. And I went, where? And she goes on his hand, it's all the stuff. And I went, give him it back, fuck him, get the money back. 100%. And Chloe, Chloe just went, thank you, man, and drove on. I went, I'm not eating that. Yeah. And we drove around through it in the bench. She goes, Jumanji, we will never be here again. Yeah. It's over. Nah, of course. Nah, I definitely, course. I still want that tenner back. Like, no, 100%. Mm -hmm. I believe they should give it to him. Yeah. And Tim Hortons, it's a disgrace. It is crazy. I think my wee sister went to Canada. Mm. And she said, it's delicious. It, it, it is. Delicious. It's different over there. And I said, that's my problem. I think it's all like processed shit. They've got wee kids, wee 15 year olds still in school, for throwing it in. And they haven't, do you know what? They, ha they haven't transported the quality control here. Yeah, they really I mean, it's just, it's dog shit. Listen. They, they run out of stuff. Mate, they fucking, oh. Uh, Going, going into Tim Hortons, you go, can I have, can I have your most basic donut is that, that fucking, what's it called? The old fashioned. Right. It's like a, just a yeah. normal fucking yeah. gravy ring. You go in, 
you ask for it nearly every time they go, we've run out. I'm like, well, I know you haven't because on this app that's called Too Good To Go, I don't know if you know about this app, you can buy 12 of them for fucking four pounds, but you have to buy all 12. Okay, I didn't know Do you that. know, because it's like when you get towards, say, like half eight, nine o'clock at night. Yeah. Now, I don't have this app. My nephew had it. He <laughs> told me about it. I refuse to download it. Good. I don't need to be told there's deals for buns yeah. after nine o'clock <laughs> at night. It's like feeding a fucking gremlin after midnight. <laughs> I'll just multiply. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I know. So, like, uh, mate, it's a fucking... Um, I don't know if you have them over here, but um, in Manchester, they, they brought them. It's an American donut, and they brought them all, and they were giving them all, like, free when I was in college to, like, promote it. Krispy Kremes. I don't know. We have Krispy Kreme here, do we? You definitely, it's in Dublin Airport. It is good. No, it's special. I had a wee Krispy Kreme. It's like, yeah. bro. I had one over in Scotland. Was, bro, well, they, they were giving out big trays of them, and they're dead smart. They had a big canal saying Krispy Kremes coming to Manchester, oh. and they were giving out boxes of 12 to everyone. Exactly. So when I ate them, and I was like, these are the nicest donuts I've ever had in my life. And I was like, yo. Then the shop opened, and I bowled in to get one. Two pound of donuts. Ah, yeah. And I'm thinking... Sure, Morrison's are the second best. Yeah, donuts. yeah. Did you have Morrison's over here? Uh, very briefly. Well, Morrison's, their bakery was the best. Uh, had custard donuts, but they were special. Like, oh, and you got little, little that does a good bakery. Do you, know where, do you know where it's good for a donut? It, now, the, I think they have a shop in Hillsborough. It's called O Donuts. But then, if you're driving out past Sprucefield on the way to Newry, there's like a wee drive in. Is this the one that you posted? Oh, mate, end? it's banging though. Like, yeah. It is banging, but it's just, it's sort of in an awkward. But you're I hard, always, you're hardly I gonna, always go down to Dublin. If, you, if you're driving that way, here it does good coffee and all as well. So it's a good, yeah. if you're doing the drive to Dublin, it's a good wee stop in and then you Do you on. drink coffee? Yeah. Because that was the next question. One or two a week. This is the next one. One or two a week? Uh, I have one or two an hour. I oh, no. Ten cups of coffee. I then. can't, mate. I see if I have, if I have maybe like, Definitely, if I have two on the same day, I'll get a wee, a wee jitter and a wee, oh my God, feeling, know? yeah, no, I do. I. And what, what coffee do you get? Cafe Oak, whatever. Oh, well, I was going to say Barista Bar or Frank and Honest? Barista Bar. Do you know Frank and Honest? Is Barista Bar, or you mean like, oh no, sorry. You know the ones I would, you get in Spa? I wouldn't, I wouldn't think. I'm but sorry. these are Northern Ireland ones? No, but I'll, Cafe was a Northern Irish company. Cafe O? Yeah. Never even had it. Mate, Ormo Road, Lisburn Road. Right, uh, Cafe O. One in the middle of town. So, Newcastle. Uh, barista Bar. They're from Tricky. the spa. What, you're against them? You're against bars? I just, no, I like spa. I just wouldn't, I wouldn't have coffee from a garage. It's not, I'm, I'm a wee bitch. I'm only going to have one or two a week. Uh, I'm going to this place. Like the barista. Where it's like a special yeah. wee. My favourite used to be Costa. Love Costa. Mate, I honestly think, I honestly, try Cafe O. It'll, it'll change your life. Okay, what do you get? What do you what do you drink? That's what I was going to ask you. I, wee, I like a wee skinny latte. A skinny latte? Yeah, because I like a latte, but I don't want it to be me. The last thing I'd think oh, you'd be no, getting I like a that. skinny latte. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you the truth, and I got in trouble for this, right? And I'm going to have to tell this story. And you're a wee trick, right? I get, I get, um, you know, flat white? Yeah. So flat white's a wee one. Yeah, it's like... But it's intense, it's nice yeah. and strong. But it's small, so when I'm getting them in the in the... Spar, I'd get a large cup. Yes. And just push double flat. Oh, here, I don't think that's. Yeah, I didn't think it was. Mate, if the system, if the system is open to you in yeah. a way like that. Yeah. Well, guess what happened? Well, it was for about a year and a half, and then guess what happened? Me and my girl goes into the spar. Oh, we do the trick. I'm stood there. Next thing. Do the trick. Is next, good. next thing. David Blaine. Yeah. <laughs> next thing, your man walks over to me and he has it manager. You know the story. And he goes, uh. Um, hello, uh, can, can I speak to you a second? And I went, yeah, of course. And he goes, I, I know you're in here every day and we really appreciate your custom, but um, it's coming up that you're uh, putting in uh, two flat whites in a uh, large cup and uh, it's costing us money now. And then I just looked at him and went, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, there she so can't do it no more. But only in that trap, and all the rest of them would do it. But see, <laughs> And that one, we well, can't do it now, and she's gone. Oh, that is grim. Like, oh, I am. Um, there's a mate of mine. Uh, it's just funnier when we were students. Now he's a solicitor. I'm like, why are you still doing this? Uh, he, um, if you go to cinema with him, he goes to the pick and mix. That's his thing. Yeah. I, I don't really like a pick and mix before, but uh, he goes to the pick and mix. And, you know, like, he, he loaded it. It's yeah. going to be a tenner. Like, yeah. And, uh, and when he's ordering his drink, 
he'll go, can I, you know, a large Coke? And when the person goes to put the large Coke in, he sets his pick and mix on the counter and doesn't acknowledge it, doesn't say anything. And occasionally, they, they also they, won't acknowledge it, but he said it there and he goes, David blames them. If they don't charge me, yeah, and he's fucking... Yeah. And he's, you can even, if they show the cameras, well, he said it on the phone. I thought I'd paid for it. That's clever. That's Smart. clever, David blamed. But I, I, as, this is the thing about me, though. When I'm witnessing this, I'm literally weeping with fear on the inside, going, yeah. we're all going to be yeah. sent to fucking shock. See, see, I'm different. I'm different. See, like, see um, big corporations, like even the two flat whites from the machine. Yeah. I don't care about that. Yeah. But you see, when it's actual people, like, I'll tell you this, I remembered it, never forget this. Me and a few of my mates stayed up all night drinking or something one night and smoking, and um, up all night in the wee cafe that we um, used to go to yeah. open, and we all marches in. And my mate says, what do you see this trick? And he walked over to the way. We all ordered our sandwiches. And he comes over and goes, uh, it's on the builder's bill. And then she went, oh, John. And he went, yes. And she went, oh, no worries. I promise you. I walks out. And uh, they were all laughing like, oh, yeah, Russell. It's Russell Erith. Just a shout out. Oh, he goes, I like guess. He goes, ah. Oh, uh, and I says, did, did you do that? No. I was riddled with guilt. Uh. You know what I've done? See when all the lads left, I went back in and says, I'll pay for mine, please. I didn't pay for all of them, but I just said, I'll pay for mine. Oh, mate, I couldn't be a great. part of it. If oh, I, didn't, no, sure. I thought them wee women are right. making all them sandwiches. Yeah. And then what the builder comes in and then the builder goes, no, there wasn't six. Yeah, yeah. So I should, sure. like, nah, bad. That shit, Brad angers me. I don't like stuff like that. It's know? sort of like when you're in a, in a nice hotel and they're like, would you like me to charge us to the room? Occasionally I'm like, yes, um, give them a room, three rooms away from Ryle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh. It's 423, not 432, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah, hold on, let me finish the rest of these. Oh, yeah. So, um, so what did you say, Barry? So, Cafe O. I go to Cafe O for coffee. Yeah, because I'll tell you, I have to say this. When I went to Whitehead, did you ever try Belfast Coffee? They sell no. it in the airport, too. No. It's called the Belfast Coffee Company. No. Maybe it was the wee cafe I went to. wasn't a fan, really. No. So, it's nowhere's good coffee. as well, to be fair, um, for coffee, but it's in different places. Jocks are as good for coffee. Oh, wow. Uh, you that have to show it. I went to jo I was in um, Hollywood two days ago. What day was it? Tuesday? Uh, was there on Tuesday? And um, I walks into Joxer and the fella recognised me and all, and then he goes, Karen was just in. I was, I was in. I, I, I just on Tuesdays. We must get you on the blasters as well, mate. hundred percent. Well, see here, I see that you play everyone. Do you, well, we start, I've, I had started not doing as much that, but now I'm back, I'm back on it. Right. Some people were like, where's the FIFA account? I'm like, I can't play, you can't please everybody because some yeah. people are going, just talk. Don't need, don't need you to play FIFA anymore. I'm like, right. And then other people are like, Put these cons to the sword when they come on your podcast. What you know, football team do you support? United. United, oh. wow. So I was like you, I supported United until I went to Manchester. Right. If you had to move to Manchester, you would have become a city fan. Right, okay. You know, city, everyone in Manchester supports city. Oh. And this was like old city. Everyone you know? in London supports but, United. Yeah, oh, wow. <laughs> exactly, that's it. But I'll tell you this, just so everyone knows, you would absolutely whoop my ass at FIFA. Right. Don't play. You're not a big gamer? No, I do like games. Right. I, there's a game I would... Bet you a lot what's of money your, that I'd your, your ass on, like, UFC. Oh, you definitely would. I haven't played it, really. Yeah, it's yeah. fucking brilliant, bro. Is it good? It's funny. UFC 3 right. was the pinnacle. Right, It was okay. fucking genius. The one with McGregor on the front yeah. on his own. Fucking genius. Then UFC 4 came out, and I was getting all excited. Bag of shit. They literally, like, fucking plummeted. So UFC 5's coming out. I'm hoping that they've sorted uh, it all out. Do you know, I think I had the first two. I definitely had two of them, so I think it must be yeah, yeah, UFC two was um, sick too. I sort of I sort of enjoyed it. I definitely remember when the first one was out, it was a wee bit clunky compared with like yes. other fighting games and yeah. stuff. But it might be interesting. There's a new one coming out, isn't there? Yeah, UFC, UFC 5. five, yeah. Interesting. And then I'll tell you my favourite game, bro, because I wasn't a gamer, I wasn't always a big gamer, but there was one games company that I became obsessed with as well. I thought they were phenomenal in a league of their own. Rockstar game. Oh fuck! Oh yeah, Max Payne and fucking Max Crap, Payne was Crap, Crap, Crap. Max Payne's mm. class. Yep, the slow mo. Yeah. The ball of time. Bro. Oh, great and time. then um, and then I don't know if you notice. I'll have to sh send it to. You. I became obsessed with Red Dead Two. I just locked myself in, my, uh, in Spain before the pandemic. Started, yeah, yeah. I went to my own lockdown. Locked everyone off. Just had my dogs, my weed, and I sat there and just played the Red Dead. See, when I went out into Spain, I felt like I was in Red Dead still. I was obsessed with it. And Stealing I, horses in real life. I was obsessed. I was doing all the side missions, everything. Oh, yeah. I was even angry when I had to roll a smoke. 
Yeah. You because know, I remember trying to ride, holding the thing, trying to roll a smoke still, you know, like ride your horse. It's upset. And I wrote a song all about it. Oh, it's on real. I wrote a song all about the game. I love Red Dead. You I, uh, I did play it a bit. So I played I played the first one far more. And then uh, with the second one, right, I got it on I got it on the Xbox and then never played it. And then I got it on PC when it came out on PC. Because, like, last year I had a wee bit more time and I was doing some Twitch stuff, right? I keep meaning to get back to it, but I haven't really done any, but I was doing a bit. And people were like, we want to see you playing right there. And I went, right. So I got on PC. And the first night, I, did, I played like an hour. Now, you might not remember, because it's if you've played loads of it, you might forget this, but the first, the first hour is, is bag, like no, where, yeah. where you're like walking up the, the fucking snowy mountain to find some cunt, and it's all slow. And it's like literally a cutscene every fucking two minutes. Yeah. So I played this first hour, and I'm talking on Twitch going, and people are going to stick with it, mate. It, it's fucking, it'll change your life and all. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> and uh, it'll change the way you think about people. And I'm like, fuck up. Because I hate this mountain, right? Yeah. And then I played through it and I went, right. And people, I got, I played it for about an hour and a half or whatever. And I went, right, that's the end of the stream. And people were like, the good news is You're off the you've, you've made it now yeah. to the bit where it really starts kicking in. And yeah. I went, right, great. Came back the next Sunday night. So I was doing... I was doing a few Twitch streams during the week of games I actually really wanted to yes. play, like Hell Let Loose or whatever. Yeah. And then I end up, I come back on the Sunday from a Red Dead and it hadn't saved. Uh, I just didn't save. No, I saved it. I fucking clicked and it didn't save. And it turned out it was a problem in my like temp files or something. A whole lot of stuff got wiped. And I went, am I actually going to have to suffer through this fucking mountain again? And I was literally like saying to people, somebody somebody tell me that there's a way for me to skip this that and people are going you just have to sh you just have to shit through it yeah and i was like well i'm gonna do grand theft all and people are like no 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 fucking just stick with it and i did it i did it again i played through mm -hmm. the same shit and i was literally going and i, could, I knew what was gonna happen i'm going here comes this fucking wolf out of nowhere yeah. there's the wolf here comes this countless fucking sob story here's the sob story i get through it all again for an hour and a half and then i played it once more after that and i was like i, I I can't give time to this every Sunday because it's gonna take over my life. Our RPGs do that, like Skyrim. I had to give Skyrim back. Uh, I got it and I had it for about three weeks. And this was when I was doing my PhD. And I actually, my supervisor was like, uh, "How's that chapter coming?" And I was like, "I don't know, but see the amount of dragons I've killed <laughs> yeah. the last two weeks. I could get a PhD in yeah. dragons. I, mean, I can, I can fucking walk my way around this fucking mythical world, you yeah. can, and." Uh, you should see the armor I have and uh <laughs> are you into PCs? Oh, uh, see, I've never played games on PC. I love it. Uh, what about Assassin's Creed? Assassin's Creed's good. I have a couple of those. I have the uh have a what do you call that one that I had? Like the there's a a fucking there's an ancient Greek one that I have there. Yes, yeah, so I bet you play as a girl. You play as a girl in uh, uh, No, the, you're talking about Odyssey. the ancient the Egypt one. What no, what's the one? It's definitely called something. It's not called Odyssey. It's called something like that though. Assassin's Creed, yeah, but Odyssey, yeah, Assassin's there Creed. is an Odyssey one as, as well. That's the one about the ancient Greeks. That's, Aye, it's like it's that like is the, called Odyssey. Yeah, I have that one. I like, you know, I remember, I remember, what, do you know, when I was at uni, one of the modules I was taking was about medieval history, right? Right. We're learning about the Crusades, and the guy lecturing it was a fucking joker, like right, yeah. like a a real joker, still in living, right? And he was, uh, he, I always remember this because it was in second year. And I was doing ancient history, but they didn't have enough ancient history modules. So you had to take a Byzantine studies module as well. So that's what I was doing. And uh, he was teaching it. And he, he put our class on at the same time as one of the ancient history modules. And it meant the guy from ancient history was like, fuck him. Give him the change his class time. I booked mine first. Fuck yeah. that guy. If there's a clash, right? So we went and said to him, listen, mate, we can't be in two places at once here. You've booked us at the same time. And he was like, fine and he was like i'll i'll teach you an hour before and we're all going that's eight o'clock in the morning you can't we had a lecture start at eight and then orange and history one was at nine right stinking so we're in at eight o'clock and when we would arrive there was only about eight of us that this affected right when we would arrive for the lecture he'd be sitting typing it up typing the notes up for the people that he's like the next lecture he's gonna give and i'm sitting there going the you're a joker right and then i swear to god one of the lectures that he did he was like, well, we're learning about uh, about the um, the Crusades and then we were learning about different heresies that the church put down at this point. So like 
the Cathar heresy and like the the Templars, right? Yes. And so he goes, uh, he goes, but that's enough about all that. He's been talking for about twenty minutes, right, about one of these heresies. And he goes, that's enough about all that. Listen, the reading lists are. Let's look at the way they would have dressed back then. And Assassin's Creed One wasn't even out yet, but he put up screenshots from like PC Gamer or something. Oh, going, and look at the way they would have dressed. And I remember sitting there going. Yeah. Am I paying you a fucking grand a year for this, yeah. Max? And you are. And mate, oh, yeah. I felt so rude yeah. by him. No, of course. Um, yeah, and he was rare looking. I done well. that. I done that in my college, bro. I'm going to tell you the truth. I went to college in Manchester uh, to learn music, and started seeing one of my teachers. So she ticked all my boxes. As you ticked one of hers? Yeah, and she just ticked all See the boxes did so I didn't study anything. Then the other teacher... Sorry, became, do you mean you started going out? Only your teachers? Yeah, right, okay. Yeah, and then the other teacher was... um He had like a record label and he became a manager. So I was seeing the live... The, the live Jesus Christ, the, you've the, infiltrated this department? Literally, like? but it didn't end up doing no work. Aye. And then there was one of the teachers who was the most boringest lecturer in the world and they would fall asleep in his class. It was just, I I went to college, it was the best years of my life, but I never like learned anything. Aye. I just sat there like I didn't really like do anything. And it's the, I always believe it's to do with the teaching it as is. well. Because like a, a boring teacher can make, the most amazing subject, shit. That's true. Yeah, you know? it's true. the same uh, the same way around. But like a, an inspirational teacher can make something that is feasibly shit good. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't think I ever had a, a good maths teacher. Yeah. And I actually liked maths when I was a kid. Yeah. And then once I hit secondary school, don't think I had a good maths teacher, and just fucking started hating it hard. Like I would, I would try and avoid it and all. Like I would book guitar lessons during maths every week to yeah. just fucking get out of it. I'm very proud of you the way you say maths. Why? Yeah, you're the first guy from Belfast to say, right, my wee Amelie's just moved here and she goes, Dad, it's dead weird. She goes, everyone says, Maz. Mono, Maz. No, but they, they, everyone from Belfast, I'm Maz. The th. They take the TH away, they call it Maz. There was a few people, would have, you would have got a couple of V's in there, Mavs. Yeah, Mavs. Um, Mavs. Yeah, and then the wee posh kids call it math. Yeah, math. Yeah, how are you getting on with math, bro? I'm like, I'm not. Yeah. I'm getting on with maths, you can't, you know, and I'm shit at it. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm so shit at it. I remember, do, do you know, I, st I still have nightmares about maths. Oh. Like, genuine, like, I'll, uh, I'll dream about sitting down in an exam paper that's meant to be history or something that I know about. Yeah. And when I open it, there's like a circle with a triangle in the middle. It's like, work out these angles. I'm like... Who, who gives a fuck? Like, do, do you know what maths should be at school? Like, up to a point. See, see, unless you want to really take it and run with it. See, algebra and fucking trigonometry and all that. You will, you will literally never use that. I know. It should be more about like, there should be more like arithmetic. And then they should teach you about shit like interest and mortgages and fucking, yeah. how are you going, oh, exactly. how are you going to get rid by the government? Yeah. That should be a wee bit in maths. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? See that fucking mate. Yeah, but that's what I'm with me about the school systems, bro. You, you can see that the school systems are designed to build slaves and, and drones and just uh, a system. Like, like what do you call it? Um, I mean, definitely student loan system. Is definitely about making obedient people look. That's what it is. No, of course it is. Obedient little people who go, well, I need to get educated yeah. in order to get a job. I need a job for a house and I need to pay through the teeth for all of it. And by the time you realize you get fucked over, you're 58 and no one cares about you. Literally. Do you know what I mean? You're staring, you're staring down a barrel of a fucking applesauce in an old person exactly. somewhere. You know? Like you say, you have one life, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when you look at um, history as well and you, you realize the amount of people and you're thinking, yeah, you get one go. You one go, you know what? And that's what you're done. Decided to be comfortable. Yeah, get injured. You know, makes me laugh. Did you ever watch the show Grand Designs? Yeah, with Kevin McLeod, mate. See, apart from the fact that he's an absolute ball bag, by the way. <laughs> see, that's shit he does at the start of the episodes where he's like, he was doing. Man, I watched one the other day, and he was he was sitting doing a jigsaw puzzle of a picture of himself. I'm like, ah, oh, for fuck. Do you know what level of? Yeah. Lip, you are yeah. right. He was sitting there going, he's sitting down, and he's like, You know, building a house requires a lot of precision. And he puts a bit in, and he's like, Meticulous nature, bang. And then he's like, And people who are like that should never be around a building site. And then the music comes on, and I'm like, Yeah, damn, McLeod. But anyway, see, whenever, see, whenever there's a couple of things in that show that are interesting, firstly, and I don't know what this is because the only show, that, the only other show that ever gave me this feeling is the Antiques Road show, the feeling of watching the rich be fucked over. Yeah. gives me a, a energy like it, it it gives me life force right yeah. um 
you know when you see somebody on Antiques Roadshow and they're like, "Yes, my uh, father brought this sword back from India," Fair. and I think. How many, <laughs> how many cunts did he mow down with it, right? Yeah. And then they go, Harris is made of old brass and your yeah. grand is a ball bag. Yeah. 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 Or they're like, oh, my, my um, you know, uh, Nana, Nana bought this painting. Uh, we believe it's a whistler. And they're like, you can go whistle me because it's fucking not, right? I love that, right? Okay. Um, do you know what I hate? They hate whenever they tell them, you know, they go, oh, what did you pay for this? Eight pounds in 1963. What would you say if uh, I told you it was worth a quarter of a million pounds now? They'd go, it's not for sale. <laughs> Fuck up. Yeah. Sell it and do <laughs> anything with it. I hate that. But anyway, on on Grand Designs, I enjoy seeing people going, yeah, we're spending 1.5 on this. Uh, we'll have it done in eight months. And you're like, you won't. You won't because the first date they came up on the show was June 2016 and I'm watching this in 2023. Yeah. So no, it's took you seven years, you can't, right? So I love that. I love that to start yeah. with. I love that they're going to get fucked over and they're going to go over budget. I love that. But you know, mate, see, see just, there's something about people saying on it. They'll always say, you only get one life, you only get one shot at this. I'm like, and you're going to spend seven years of it stressing about bricks? Yeah. Fuck up. Like, pay pay the extra half a million now and get more people in to work on it and maybe you'll get it done in eight months. Yeah. CS Bollocks, I watched one, that one I watched the other night, some cunt, they dug a hole in the ground, obviously, for his house and he was building a house in the hill and made it took him fucking six years yeah. and I'm literally looking at it going, you, you could have contributed two massive pieces of work to the world in that time, like two two new bits of human research to advance the the race it takes three years to do something like that, like a, a big project, three years. I'm like, you could have done that twice, and all you've done is build a fucking garage. Yeah. I know, Mid I know but that's, I felt similar to that when I was playing Red Dead too, and then I actually got a bit depressed. I thought, fuck, I've played, I've just invested all my time into it. Usually if I invest all my time into something, it's like you said. There's a, a product at the end. There's a product at the end. There was but nothing at the end. I think the product of gaming, though, is both your enjoyment and apparently enriches your fucking mental ability. Yeah, well, I mean, you do. I, I can see that even about the shooting games and all. Because I mean, did you say about the wee kids then getting asked to be drone pilots and all? Oh, playing, really? From playing um, uh, Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Yeah, like the best, the best like droners uh, like in the world and all come from there. It's nuts. Like that, that is a wee bit sad though, isn't it? Yeah. Just fucking the, the best droners are now fucking. Just actually, yeah. just wrecking farms like. I did I mean? love to like um. I love to get old games. I seen there was a thing as well about a weekend and all back in the day, and they used to go to the Nintendo convention. Oh, amazing! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? The, uh, I was into all that. Yeah. Like as a kid, no, my, my game. You're the same age as me, so you probably know um the N64. Oh, wow. Golden Eye. Oh, mate, Golden Eye. That was my era. The I fucking was bro. the chop. Oh, yeah. The, did you ever play, the four screen? Did you ever do the four screen and you were only allowed to chop? Yeah. Oh, uh, of course. Or, the, you, or the pistols on. Oh, the golden golden everything, bro. We loved it. Awesome. And me and my mates. Me. Oh, job. You couldn't fucking shoot the car because yeah, he was tiny. Yeah, but it was, yeah, I was obsessed with that uh, Golden Eye, and that's what was that funny because that Christmas, my brother. Not all job. What do you call? It was called Odd Job. Was it Odd Job that you couldn't shoot? Odd Job. Knick Knack. Was Knick Knack in it? Knick Knack. There was one of them that you could, was he the one you couldn't fucking shoot? Oh, because he was too small. He was tiny. Was small guy. Yeah, it was impossible. You had to aim actually at him. Yeah. So we can't. Oh, bro, I loved that. Me and my mates every day after school, boom, straight upstairs to the N64. My brother had a PlayStation, but that wasn't as good. He had nah. Abe's Odyssey and shit. And I remember Abe's Odyssey. Tomb Raider. Raider. Yeah, but oh, Tomb Raider was great, though. I didn't like it, bro. It was too clunky yeah. or something. I had fucking Golden Eye Mario Kart. That was another game. But Banjo Kazooie, that was a good game. Oh, Ocarina of Time. Best ever fucking game in the world, bro. Was oh, it? fucking right. amazing. It was like the original Red Dead as well. Yeah, right? yeah, just galvan about it. No, 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 I, I remember the first time I saw Goldeneye, literally being like, the world is amazing. Yeah. Like, this is. Can you remember the Mission Impossible game as well that came out? I remember, so one, on the, I remember one on the PlayStation, Mission Brilliant. Impossible. And you had to walk around and pretend. No, it was sick. I remember... Um, there was a game that I loved on the PlayStation called S Siphon Filter. Obviously. Oh, Fucking mate. incredible. No one talks about that game. Siphon Filter is, was serious. That was so good. And, and you know Metal Gear Solid? Oh, amazing. So do you want to know, I don't know if you even, can you, do you know about this? The final boss, and, uh, and I'm the original PlayStation, right? For Revolver Metal Gear Solid. Ocelot. You had to fucking take your... Um, oh, you had to take the memory cards out now? What do you call them? Fucking Psycho Mantis. 
happened. Swap your memory cards over. That's the most because he read your fucking yeah. memories, and that's the trick. So anything you do, and he kept on defeating you. There's yeah. no way to beat him. And then yeah, it, it keeps on saying at the start of the fight, he reads your memories. Yeah. He reads your memories. I remember that. Oh, bro, that's sick. You know, probably one of the only pirate items I ever had. Weirdly, I did have a pirate copy of Lion King shot on a fucking wall. Uh, well, we, 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 got, we got that out of a butcher's now. Anybody else? But um, but the uh, the, what do you call it? The um, the the only pirate thing I ever had was this thing, uh, and I got a lens of it. And when my dad found out we had it, he was like, "God, you're not allowed that." And I was like, "Right." It was like a wee box that you plugged into the back of a PlayStation, yes. and it had every game on it, mate. Yeah. I, I I played Medal of Honor on that every day for like Sick. a summer, and Resident Evil Two, mate. Right. Res I I actually associate Resident Evil Two with certain songs and all, yeah, because yeah, I would have had my high file, and would have had the bit, songs that were big that summer was like, do you know do you know the song uh, Every Morning by Sugar Ray? It was like it's like every morning when I wake up there's a halo hanging from the corner of my bed. The altar was class at and like there was an old Fountains of Wayne song before they were really famous called like Red Dragon Tattoo and like they were just on the radio all the time. Sick. And uh and other pop songs and shit from that time. Smash Mouth was on a lot. Uh, a guy died this week. No. A guy from Smash Mouth, yeah, you know. Uh, but I met at that time, Medal of Honor, Resident Evil 2, Siphon Filter, and a bit of Smash Mouth. Next level shit. What bro. a fucking time. I started off, my very first ever console was the Nintendo. Right. Just right. Nintendo. And um, it was like 92. Uh, my dad went over to America. Yeah. And um, we were there with him. We went to America as we kids. And what was there? Fucking Godzilla game. Oh, man. So I said, buy the Godzilla game. And we bought it. Me and my brother couldn't wait to get home. We got home, put in the game, hyped. Guess what? Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Oh, the P worst. Pal one, pal yeah, two. Oh, yeah. It's a fucking American game, bro. It was the, I still hurt to this I know, mate, yeah. I still never ever seen what that you ne you, you never, like. You never get over uh, yeah. shit like that when yeah. you're a kid. Just... And Duck Hunt. Can you remember Duck remember Hunt? Remember Duck no. Hunt, yeah. Do you remember, no. there's a thing came out. So the, this, the Nintendo had one as well. It was like a light gun. But I can't remember. There was one for Sega. It was like a, you had the word on your shoulder. It was called the Menacer. Right. Where you could hold it out in front like that, see, and it was like uh -huh. it was like a light gun thing. We went. You from, play Terminator with it. See, yeah, well, I went from the original Nintendo, then I never got a Super NES, uh, and I never got the original Sega. I got see, the we, Mega Drive too. I we we had the Mega Drive too. Yeah. That was that was the, the shit. Miniature one Aladdin, was, uh, Sensible uh, Soccer, Sonic, uh, Sensible uh, fucking Streets of Rage and Golden Axe. Street. That was Golden that Axe. that 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 thing that. Mega games yeah. with Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, and and fucking Shinobi. Shinobi. Shinobi's the best. <laughs> Shinobi was yes. The shadow pick and the fucking the wee the wee and then, and then here I'll tell you after Shinobi. Can you remember when it advanced the wee bit the graphics? Not. Can you remember Tenchu? Tenchu. Fucking. The fucking the that was that was on PlayStation. Tenchu. Yeah, the fucking the, the oh. stealth assassins. Fucking yes. Incredible. See, I mean, they need to make a fucking yeah. new Tenchu. Mate, like this. you know, so there's one on there's one on. PC, it's called like Sekiro or something. It's called Shadows Die Twice or something. And it's a wee bit tenchy, but it's also a wee bit more magical. Yeah. And then yeah. there's one, there was one that they were meant to be making, and it was just called, it was literally just called Ninja. Yeah. And I, I think it's dead in development, but it was on my wish list for yeah. ages. Mate, yes, I played a new tenchy with modern graphics. I played, um, I got excited that it said it's a bit like a new tenchy Ghost of Hiroshima. Oh, why? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's too clunky. It is see, a wee bit clunky. See, when you play fucking Red Dead 2 and like Rockstar smashed it. Yeah. Rockstar, I've, I've, I've smashed, that's why I don't even mind it to take 10 years in between games yeah. now because I'd wait that because when a new Rockstar game it, comes you're out. You're going to have it for 10 years. It's all, like, I mean. Grand Theft Auto now yeah. is still better than loads of games that are coming out. Of now. course. It's 10 years old. Fucking what do you call it as well? Uh, I love that L.A. and Noir game they did. The, the, and Bully the, even was oh, yeah, Bully. Bully was Belka. <laughs> that was a fucking gig. Yeah. I remember them. They definitely, one of the teachers in our school went off about that one day. Yeah. About, heard about it and then gave, gave shit about it. Some classroom, half of us are sitting there going, 
I have on the house. For fuck's sake. Yeah. Listen, we'll have to wrap it up. Yes, in fact, though, there's two more questions. Oh. Um, right, so blue lights or give me a headpiece? Oh, blue lights, yeah. What, you don't like blue, give me a headpiece? I don't mind it, but I wouldn't sit and watch it. I'll blue watch lights blue lights. brilliant, isn't yeah. it? I was dead upset about that, but that's another story. Right, Northern Irish tato or Irish tato? Oh, up here. Fuck, fuck, fuck it, Southern tato. They like. even taste a bit like generic American. They're, no. Crisps or something? Fuck them as well. Yeah. Tato Park or Emerald Park, you've been there. What's Emerald Park? It's, one down there? No, yeah, oh, they destroyed Tato Park. Took away Mr. Tato, no. Oh, it's coming back, don't think. No, no. no oh, no. I sold it. But they're definitely. Tato doesn't around there no more. Well, the one, the, the castle thing. Are you talking about down south or up here? Uh, is there an actual. When I said I was going to Tato Park, I meant the one in Dublin. All oh, right, no, there's one, there's one up here in Tandragee, and they're they're bringing the tours back after the pandemic soon. I want to go to that. I'm saying this as if, like. Yeah. I know this because I'm an avid fan. I'm, I'm there. Uh, I've been working with Tato a bit. So. Good. Well, I love Tato, and I do love the Northern Tato. I do and also. I want to go to the castle. There. Do you know what we fully did, by the way? When so Tato put, they put cheese and onion on the, or we asked them would they put cheese and onion on every seat in the waterfront? And then the waterfront were like, "Look, you can bring Tato, but not before the show, right?" I was like, "Right." So we gave them away to everybody as they were leaving the show. Do you know what sort of might have happened by accident? A full industrial sized box of that might have come back in our house. We don't know. It might we still don't know. Yeah. Tato sandwiches for weeks in the lead up to us moving house. What did What did you think of the Tato chocolate that done? Was he not feeling it? Wasn't for me. Like. I'll tell you the truth. I, this is a, I don't know. It's a bit of a secret. I have no sense of smell. Right? So it affects your taste. But I never thought it did my whole right. life yeah. until my wee sister one Christmas got them. Um, see them uh, jelly beans. One tastes like dog shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like um, chocolate. Yeah. Well, I kept on doing it and thinking, oh, I've, I've got a bad one. And then I was thinking, no one's as lucky. So I bet half and said to myself, <laughs> right? And she said, no. So that's when I freaked out. Maybe a dunk taste as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. But when I ate the chocolate, I loved it. Do you smoke fags as well as the no. your weed? Well, I was like, yeah, I do. Yeah, but yeah. like roll ups. Oh, I but you don't like, you don't, you wouldn't be doing like 20 or 30 a day? Nah, I would smoke like, um, licorice papers. No right. Because the, the smoking fucks your palate as well. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know. I think it's to do with the smell. Like, uh, yeah, no, definitely. I'll Oh, fuck it like Wheaton or Vita fuck I mean v v Vita it's, it's tough because I don't really like either you don't like either so so Wheaton Wheaton I don't like it because my dad didn't like it and he and I remember saying and I used to think it was alright and I said to him why do you not like Wheaton and he said see if you sniff it close it smells like Dalgetty which used to be the animal feed place on the what do you call on right. New York Road like as you're driving down the motorway um and it's had loads of different names. I don't know what it's called now, but it was an animal feed place. And my dad's from North Belfast, so the smell of it used to turn him. I'm waiting. I made, if you smell it, it does. So, like, well, it's turned me. Smells. And then Vida. <laughs> Vida. I don't actually mind. I would never seek it out. Yeah. But, like, do you know what used to do in my head? I'm going to work in the Tesco kitchen. Like, in the kitchen for just staff. There was a wee girl who used to come in. So, I, I used to have to make fries and all in the morning. And uh, and there was a wee girl used to come in. There was a sort of like it was pretend this is the counter where I'm working, and I have a counter back there. People would come up to me, and I'd serve them cook, or I'd serve them here, and that's the way it's meant to be. But there's also like a fire exit there, yeah. And this wee girl used to come in the fire exit while I was doing stuff, slice a couple of bits of Vita, throw them in the toaster, and walk off. Now, fair enough, right? Make your own toast, maybe. But this toaster, once once you've cranked it a couple of times that day, it'll do eight rounds of toast in about ten seconds. Right, yeah, like it's like yeah, it's, it's industrial, it's fucking yes. hot, right? So she would just set it in the next day. I'd be overcooking and go, Fuck that smell, fire alarm goes off. I'm like, Look over, it's Veda. Yeah. See, trying to scrape that shit, yeah, because it's so sticky. Of course, once it's stuck on the inside yeah. of a toaster, like you're it's there all day, yeah, you have to no. unplug everything to scrape a toaster as well. And you're going, So she, so fucking play. Uh, nutty it's crust, that's my answer. To that one, nutty crust, is yeah, the best. yeah. And do you like nutty crust over like Ormo? Never yeah, sun up, sun Nut, blast? nutty crust. If, if, I'm, if I'm having like, if I'm, unless I'm having like a fucking hovis yeah. type bread, like yeah, pan bread, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I I'll go for the nutty crust as well. The, the only thing I don't like about it is it doesn't stay fresh for very long, it doesn't, I it goes know. off. Yeah, that's true. But that means there's no preservatives and shit. So, do you like um, that's true. I love the wheat and with stew. I, oh, that's yeah, the yeah. best. That is the best. Do you prefer Irish stew or corned beef stew? So uh, hold on, Irish is with lamb, um, or mince. Yeah, I'll have it with. I have. Do you know, Chloe makes it. My mum would have made it with mince. Chloe makes it with uh 
like wee bits, like what do you call it? Giblets? Steak pieces. Oh, yeah. Steak pieces? So steak stew? Yeah, mate. That is, and here, that is the shit. That's special. Yeah, because like, okay. she braises that meat forever. Does, she, does oh. she put Guinness in it? Cook no. it with Guinness? You need to cook it we with do, Guinness. We do it with just like gravy and all. No, no, obviously you have it with gravy, but I'm saying you pour Guinness into it while it's cooking and then it all evaporates out and you're left with a real, I promise you. No, no, I, 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 I don't know if I like that taste though. You would like it, I promise you. You don't taste Guinness in it. Next time, next time I'm here. Uh, Guinness stew is yeah, the crisis, right? Definitely. And then last one then, main or smack? Oh, main, yeah, for sure. Yeah, 100%. Although we'll say, smack pineapple is. Right. Back in the day. Okay. Like, Packed a punch like yeah, twenty p or something for the wee bottle. Oh, it's, that, it's just fucking. Man, it's just awful for you. My favorite that main American cream soda. Oh, uh, do, do you know? Uh, main are about to sponsor an episode of No Blasters, and they're bringing some shit over. If there's a cream soda, I'll save it for you, right? Yeah, they're they're I've 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 requested sarsaparilla. I like the sarsaparilla. I, I bought it in the other day. I bought it at the, up at the Tesco's in Carrickford. I haven't had it in years, yeah. so. Me and, me and they, like, do they still mostly do on the truck? Oh, my granny used, they used to, to do it. They used to, they used to drive man. around the truck yeah. with me and man, and they would, uh... But they were in the bottle, the, 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 the glass, glass bottles. bottles. Yeah. That's what I'm expecting. Here. What, don't, what else don't is it? Down. Don't be let down. They probably are going to come in with these new plastic Oh, um, no, man, if you're yeah. watching this before you come to my podcast, <laughs> glass... I was yeah. about to say glass, mate. Don't do that. Yeah. Just bring glass bottles. <laughs> you want them, just fucking... Are you expecting to be man to pull up like the milkman there? But yeah. I remember. He's going to get out and fucking smash a bottle. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, no, man, man's better than smack. But oh, smack, smack pineapple aid is the OG. Like, do, you know, yeah. do you know what you used to be stinking, though? I was talking about this the other day. It's absolutely leaping. Do you, remember, you know that you know Iceland? You know the fucking yeah. shop. They used to do um, they used to do their own brand of limeade, and this stuff looked radioactive, right? Like yeah, uh, like yeah. a real a luminous, like a luminous green. yellowy yeah. green. Mate, see, like it was fairly late, but my dad loved it. Me, my dad loved. He right a couple of things he loved, fucking cigarettes, westerns, shit films, and bad juice. Yeah. Right, he he loved smack. Right. And he loved like Iron Brew and all right. See, see, um, see what we call it. See that lime He loved that. And my dad was the sort though that, like, you know, whenever you've got like fizzy juice, like, and it gets down, say, oh, towards the level, you, to you just you just commit and go. I'm opening the next bottle. Yes. My dad would have been like, "You're having that, yeah. right?" Oh. Mate, see out there when it was flat and yeah, that fucking thinking. warm. Oh my god, thinking. literally one of the worst things. It was like a fucking alien's piss. Like it was thinking. fucking disgusting. Like I do try and limit. My like um fizzy drinks. Don't yeah, like yeah. Them. I drink like I drink coffee, water. Do you drink a lot of water? I do. I do, I do a lot of sparkling water mostly. Yeah, sparkling. Because I used to have a wee diet coke problem. Yeah. Did, uh, yeah. did you? That's interesting. There's Getting someone else it. in my life who has Tell a diet coke problem. Very hard to get to get off at because it, it genuinely for the first week and a half, just brutal headaches that when you're when you're coming off it because it's that. Yeah, call it aspartame or whatever. Yeah, that, aspartame. That's what you're addicted to. And that causes Alzheimer's. Oh, I mean, it's a fucking nightmare. See, you know, like now I'll, I'll do, I'll do like uh, an occasional, like I would say one, again, one or two a week of like a, a Fanta orange or a fucking, mm-hmm. you know, Dr. Pepper or something. Do you not like club, the club orange? If I can get club, we'll have club over Fanta, but right, you can't always get it. Like, yeah, of you course. know, yeah. Uh, I like, oh, you know, it's great on a hot day, club lemon. No, can you not remember, even better? Can you not remember the Rock Shandy? Rock Shandy, yeah, yes. that's a fucking great thing. Yeah, that was the best. You can, the... can you still get that in the bottle? What you can get can. Club Rock Shandy? Yeah, and it was like a, it was like, like a orangey blue. lemony yeah, flavor. But, no, but the the wrapper was like blue or something. Yeah, yeah, it was like like light blue. Yeah, yeah, no, it was sick. Oh, Lilt used to be good as well. Lilt was all right. That yeah. was the Jamaican, a totally one. tropical taste. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's the tropical Lilt was a again bit absolutely thing. stinking though. Once it starts to flatten, yeah. Like absolutely yeah. just syrup. Of course. Like this is Of course. My favourite thing I tell you I'd love as well, even in Manchester, the um old Jamaica ginger beer. Oh mate, do you want to have one of them over in Scotland? Uh like I, I was uh I had a, my throat was fucked and we were we were watching Troy Hawk and just before it started I went, I better get a drink here because keep my throat wet here, you know, yeah. so I'll get that dry cough that I have. And um I was, uh, I went out and I was like, what soft drinks have we got? And I looked in the hobble and I like, goes, can I have a ginger beer? Mate, the guy looked at me like I just shit on his Christmas presents. Like, I was like, what are you? He was like, comes over, he's like, that's two pounds. I was like, why are you raging about this? Yeah. It's 
Like I'm drinking it. No one's sending you. You have to. Yeah. It is nice, like. Yeah, it's really yeah. good. I can't get it anywhere. I know, I know you can't, but I'll tell you what you can get. It's really nice. The Australian in there in wee bottles, um, glass oh, bottles, okay. Blunderberg. Is it a wee ginger beer, is it? They do two drinks. They do root beer, but I'm not into right. root beer. I don't think I've ever had one. It's weird. You should try it. Like, so it? you can say it's like an American root beer. It's called. What does it, it taste like? Though? It's like a bit like um Dr. Pepper. Right, okay. Or Dandelion and Burdock. All right, okay, like right. It's a bit like that, but it's weird. It's an American drink, right. but it is from Australia, and then they have the ginger beer. And they're like a fiver for four bottles, oh, okay. but they're real good. Like, right, like, nice one. Listen, we could talk all day, my bro. 100%. You're nice an man. absolute G. Good times. Thank Thank for having me. Yeah. Sorry for the break in the middle. Nah, you're welcome. Much right. love. Thanks. See you me. later. Take it easy. <laughs> Made those lethal. What's happening? This is John Sue. Just slammer. <laughs>